Hey guys, welcome. Hope everyone's enjoying their Friday so far. Because it's all downhill from here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tanzania? I think that's a first. I don't, don't remember hearing that one before. That's awesome. Hello, welcome back. Hassan, Red, Olaf, Rima, Ludovic, Masoud, and Dave, and Paul. Hey, Paul. Paul made it. Special shout out to Paul. Paul is a married man who's living the bachelor lifestyle by hanging out with us tonight. I feel like I should apologize in advance to Paul. Denmark, Germany, man, Brazil, awesome. Well, hey, welcome everybody. It is Friday afternoon, so that means we get to do some modeling. So that's awesome. I'm glad you guys are here. And I was just teasing, Paul. It's awesome that you're hanging out here and have the opportunity to spend some dedicated time on the live stream. Uh, Paul is one of the many people I've heard that uh, like the stream, but you know can't hand out, hang out all night because it's uh, he lives on the other side of the world in the UK. It's totally understandable. I don't know that I'd stay up late for me. So, way to go, guys! <laughs> Melbourne, Australia, Ukraine. Uh, awesome. Well, hey, thanks everybody who's hanging out. It's good to see you all. I'm glad, glad to have so many people uh, here already. Couple points of business before we dive in. So we are gonna, what we're gonna try to model tonight is an old school, I don't wanna say antique, I don't know how old something has to be to be an antique, but an, an older barber chair, which is, it's a really cool thing if you look at how it works. I'm not really sure how it's gonna go, but we'll make something. It's going to be a, a cool model, I think. Um, I'll show you the pictures that I have to work from. No plans or anything like that. This is going to be one of those situations where uh, we create something that is inspired by the original because uh, I don't have enough detailed photos or anything to match what's there. So we're going to look at the pieces and kind of put together a cool looking chair that looks like or feels like uh, one of those chairs, which is really cool. So we'll, we'll hop in and we'll look at that. Um, a couple things I need to point out or throw out there. Uh, I've mentioned a couple times that uh, our 3D Base Camp 2020 is all, we're in the midst of planning. It's going to be awesome. It is September 2020, the 12th through the 16th. Uh, hopefully you guys are interested in that. It would be awesome to get a big contingent of, of you uh, live modelers there with me and hanging out. And maybe we'll even do a live model from Base Camp. That'd be kind of fun. But we could all sit in the room. You could yell real things at me rather than typing them. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> For who? I don't know. Um, but to that end, uh, I wanted to hook you guys up. So as a special offer to you guys who are live stream audience, um, I have a special coupon code if you guys are interested. So if you do go to our base camp, 3D, sketchup.3dbasecamp.com, and uh, click on tickets, you can put in a code there. And if you put in Aaron Hookup, it'll actually take $200 off any ticket you buy. So um, there's only 20 of them, only 20, it'll only work 20 times. So I wanna throw that out to you guys and uh, see if anybody was interested in that because it's, you know, it's, 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 it costs a little bit. It is, I mean, it's actually not very expensive compared to a lot of professional uh, conferences going on right now, but but uh, yeah, $200 off is a pretty good deal. I figured that would help you guys out. So write that down, buy a ticket. And if you do buy a ticket, let me know. And then let's, let's, uh, let's get together base camp and do some live modeling or something like that. That would be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I wanna share that. I'll flash that up again later on in the, in the stream too. So I know not everybody who's gonna be here is here right now, but the latecomers get a shot too. But you're here now, so you get the first shot at it. So. Go for it, grab that, uh, that code right there. I'm doing the green screen uh, weatherman thing by looking at seeing what, I'm, that code right down there, that's the one. Um, yeah, so try it out. Cause I'd love to see you there, love to hang out with you at base camp. 
Um, yeah, base camp's gonna be awesome. We're, we're setting it up. It is, it's an amazing venue and uh, we're gonna have some awesome content there, some great people. So if, uh, if $200 was the make or break thing for you, you got no reason not to come now. So give that a shot. All right, so what I wanted to start talking about, let's, let's take a look at what we're gonna be, what it is we're gonna be modeling. So I do have a handful of uh, reference images that I could show real quick. Right, <laughs> okay, it's a big handful. It's a lot of hands. But uh, I was looking through barbershop chairs and I was actually thinking about last time I got my hair cut and uh, the place I go has fairly, I don't know, modern looking chairs. It's, you know, a seat in the back and there's a little wire or like metal tube loop that you put your feet up on and that's really all there is to it. It turns around, it goes up and down, that's it. But I started looking at some of these antique ones and I found this guy, Emil, Emil J. Pedar, maybe, is how you say his name. You guys know how good I am with names. But all of his barber chairs look like this, which is super cool. Um, I jumped ahead, I got so excited, I forgot to welcome Casey back. Casey's on the other side of the monitor right now. Hello, glad to be back. He enjoyed it. He, he, you guys were so nice and he enjoyed his time with you guys, so he came back for more. So that's awesome. Um, Casey actually looked up some information, so we'll be, we'll be getting some more information about Emil as we start working through this model, but uh, very cool, like, like I said, I'm not sure if it qualifies as antique. I don't know how old something needs to be to be antique, but yeah. very involved. Is that? I think it's a minimum of 25 years or more, Ooh. minimum. I'm an antique, <laughs> <laughs> like, like securely, <laughs> securely in the antique pocket. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is what we're gonna do. Um, ran, ran behind on a couple of hellos. Hey guys, France, awesome. Uh, Rodrigo, welcome. Nice to be seen by you. I'm glad to, glad to have you here. Italy, wow, France. We got a, a big con international contingent here. The SketchUp UN. All right, so, uh, so yeah, so I have some specific models that I, wanna, I want more inspired by than others. Hey, Alejandro, Dean. Welcome, guys. Man, so cool. Uh, I did, as usual, I did create uh, just a real quick, um, oh, whoa, it, it, it all went away for a second there. I, I didn't mute, my, my brain shut down for half a second. All right, so I did create a topic on the forum for this. It is SketchUp Live from the barber, barber shop, so if you guys have good images to pass or information, that's cool. Um, we can hold it, we can transfer it in there. The other thing, I wanna do something new that, that has not been done. I'm gonna take this down. Uh, for those of you just coming in, this is a coupon code if you wanna buy a, a ticket to base camp. It, uh, it'll give you $200 off any ticket you wanna buy. Um, but I'm gonna take that down for right now. I'll put it back up a little bit later. Uh, but I need, I need the screen, I need, I need it all. All right, so something I wanna do that I've, I haven't done before on a live session, um, but you guys know I'm, I am a fan of different peripherals. Uh, we've talked before, I have my uh, MX Master mouse that I use, that's the one that has the buttons on the side, um, programmable buttons, everything. So I have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven commands mapped to buttons on just this mouse. So a lot of my uh, basic input, in, so I have a button here for my line tool, I don't have to hit anything, just line tool starts up, eraser tool. Um, oops, I'm not casting, hold on, let me, let me key cast. So all the, the way that works is it just maps these buttons on the side to letter keys. So real, real simple, my select command, move, uh, push pull, rotate, and rectangle are all mapped to buttons on my mouse. I love it, it speeds up input for me, it definitely makes it quicker and easier. Same thing with my 3D mouse, you guys have seen me use this 3D mouse like crazy. Uh, not only does it allow me to nice smooth movements in 3D, but it's got all these buttons around the outside that are programmable. I'm a big fan of that kind of hardware because it does speed, speed up input, uh, it makes it easier to uh, you know get design done. So I had an opportunity 
to show you guys and try out a new piece of hardware. So this right here, I'm gonna hold it up to the overhead, is the sketch pad. It's shiny, so it's hard to get a good, good look at it. The sketch pad for SketchUp. So there's a gentleman, I don't know if he's on or not. He said he's gonna try to join. Steve Moore is, uh, has designed this thing and has it on Kickstarter. So the general idea of the sketch pad, which I said like it's, it's shiny, so I gotta get it out of the light so you can actually see it. The, the general idea about it is it's, it's a pre-programmed mini keyboard that has the most commonly used commands right on top. So right on there, so um, offset, move, rotate, arc, all of them are just right here with these colorful little icons that show you what it is. So rather than, whoo, I just threw it on my laptop. So rather than having to take your hand over to your laptop, you can actually, you know, or your, I'm gonna actually remove my 3D mouse for this. I actually put this right here and use just this rather than hopping around over here. Um, the other thing that I really like about this, the, the idea I like about this a lot, is there's this key right here, it's, it's probably hard to see, uh, but this key says second, uh, and that's, when that key is depressed, the, the keypad over here functions like a standard 10 keypad. So one of the issues I have with my standard laptop keyboard, which is where I do most of my input from, is I don't have the 10 key. Um, so any of my input, I end up using the top row right here to put dimensions in or, or uh, scaling or any time I put numbers in, I have to use this top keyboard. I really like the 10 keypad. So it, this has a potential of filling that need for me. Um, I do want to point out, this is a prototype, so it's not available right now. Um, if you go to, if we hop over here to our forum page, I did put a link. Uh, if you click on that link, it'll take you right into his Kickstarter. And I'm not, I'm not I mean, I'm not trying to shill products or anything like that. I have no personal tie to it, but I think it's kind of a neat concept. And what I really want to do today is put it to the test. I want to try to use this as much as possible, not use my keyboard, um, and just see if how much of a how much of my input I can do using just these keys and not the big keyboard. So uh, let's let's try it. Let's see let's see what happens. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be well for you. I'm sure you guys will have fun with it. I don't know. We'll we'll see. <laughs> you know, it's hard to pick up a new peripheral and use it. Um, it is it is Bluetooth. So it has a little charging port. It's a USB, I don't know. I can't keep my USB straight. It's the one that's like, it's not USB-C. It has kind of a little angle, it's a little trapezoidal shape. Uh, it's one of those which actually happens to be the same charging port as my mouse, which is kind of nice because I could actually charge these on the same thing. But yeah, it's just a Bluetooth keyboard. It's actually pre-mapped. So the, the idea what Steve wanted to do is have it be plug and play, like you turn it on, sync it, and you're running. So you don't have to actually go through and do any mapping on the keyboard or in here. It is mapped to default keystrokes. Now, those of you guys who are experienced out there, and, and I can already hear what you're saying, but you know, I have custom keyboard strokes, I have that, and that's fine. This this maybe this first version isn't to you. Maybe in the future there'll be one that's programmable. But uh, what you could do is if looking at this, I know that I have each of these buttons is basically a letter to me, right? So this is the E key, this is the C key, this is the R key. So if I wanted to, I could actually remap all these buttons to totally different commands uh, just using those same, uh, same keystrokes. So uh, I look at it as being fairly programmable and not, not uh, limited to just those, those initial functions. So I'm excited, I'm gonna try it out. I don't know how it's going to go. Like I said, the other thing, I'll point this out. As I go through, uh, I have been going back and forth with um, Steve on this because I did take it. I played with it a little tiny bit. I really wanted to kind of go through the initial walkthrough with you all so you guys could enjoy my pain. I didn't want to just be in pain alone. Um, but you guys can actually see how that goes. But I did take an initial stab at it, and I did have some feedback for Steve. So he's very receptive, loves to hear that, that input. So I will tell you a couple things that, that I recommended to him that, that may make it into the final. I don't know, I'm not sure, but watch this. If you're interested, the Kickstarter, I can't remember, it's like 50 bucks, 50, 50 $60, something like that for this. If, 
like I said, if it works the way I'm hoping it will, well worth the investment uh, as far as hardware for SketchUp, especially if you're a, a hardcore SketchUpper. Uh, it, <laughs> it does. Camboard called out immediately. Got a save button. That's right. I can just tap that once and save. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so let's let's go ahead and and hop in and I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. So, whoops. All right. So we're back. Ooh, I just grabbed. I just grabbed for my 3D mouse. I'm already already experiencing growing pains, but that's cool. I mean, I can I can I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. All right. Learning. I can learn. I save regularly, regularlyer now than I used to, so I can be taught. All right. Um, so first thing, I'm going to import a. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to import an image just to use as reference. I'm going to go to import, and out here on my desktop, I have two images. Uh, let's see. So this kind of hero image where it's just the chair on a white background, and then one. It's actually in a room, but it has the other side of it, which is important because there's some differences between the two sides. But I'm going to grab this one, and I'm going to not import it at all. I'm going to actually go to my styles, edit my styles, and go to my watermark, and add this as a watermark. All right. I'm going to put it in the background. Yeah, we can. No, I don't look at this. Uh, that looks good. Position it. I want to put it over here. There we go. That's a good amount of space. Oh, that's where my head is, huh? Um, all right. Since we're changing stuff, I'm going to get crazy with it. I'm going to put it over on this side. And I'm going to move my toolbars. Oh, maybe. All right, we'll put these down here. And uh, I'll pull them up as I need them, but there we go. Now you can see it and I can see it. That's a plus. Um, okay, so this is what we're going for. So just a real quick walkthrough. Like I said, I looked at barbershop chairs and there's a ton of, I mean, there's a lot of chairs. <clears throat> so the thing I liked about, I forgot his name, was it Emil? I believe so. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure on the pronunciation, though. Yeah, we'll assume it's a meal. <laughs> yeah, that, that would make sense. <laughs> His chairs is that they were intricate. They're they're like, it's not just a bunch of tubes welded together. There's actually like formed, and you can tell there's cast pieces on here. And one of the big things that Casey told me about just as we were before we started this is that it was one of the first barbershop chairs to recline. So um, not that it happens too often now, but remember when you watch like, Goodfellas or, or something like that, you know, Al Capone sitting in the chair and he leans back to get shaved, that kind of thing. That was sort of what this was for. So you can actually see when you look at the image, there's a hinge here, a hinge here, a hinge here. So it actually makes it able to lean back like that, which is super cool. I don't know that we'll actually be leaning ours back. It'd probably be pretty static considering we only got, uh, considering I'm talking a lot and we're already 20 minutes in. <laughs> So uh, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and hop right in. So again, my general desire here is not to model this exact chair, but a chair that looks like this. So like I said, I don't have any images other than this. So I'm going to use this sort of as an inspiration to get the similar shapes. Um, you'll have to forgive me if everything is not perfectly proportioned. Forgive me. All right. So with that, let's, let's start modeling. Um, I'm looking at this. I think what I'm going to start with is the seat and kind of work my way out from there. Uh, so I am going to tap the rectangle key on the keypad. Works like a dream. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start with a square shape. And then I'm going to put an arc on it on the back. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah. I think that's about what we got going on there. So we'll pull that up, give it a little bit of depth. All right, I'm gonna erase with, okay, so here's, I hit one thing. 
this was the first thing that I, I, I did comment to Steve is one of the keys that's missing from this, I really, I'm sorry, I can't, I don't have a, you know what, I should, hold on. I know what I can do. I don't normally review hardware, so uh, that's a thing. So there we go. So if you look at the image, one of the things that, that's not here is an alt or option key. So it does have a modifier fee, key for control and for shift, but that alt option key is missing. So one of the things I talked to, mentioned to Steve about is that this was having this shortcut key mapped to space and having space down here is extra. So uh, I actually talked to him about remapping this space to control or option because one of the things I want to do right now is I want to erase, soften this line and I have to hold down the option key to do that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat and leave the keyboard to do that. Maybe I shouldn't. What should my rules be? Should I, should I make a rule that I can't use the main keyboard? What do you guys think? I need, <laughs> I need, I need your thoughts. I mean, how harsh do I want to be on myself? Do I, should I like, I don't have a thing to cover it up with, but should I pretend this isn't here at all and only use this keyboard? What do you guys think of that idea? I'm giving you a second to, to, to respond. It would be funny. It sounds like Alejandro just said yes. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a try, okay? Um, I'll, I'll, if I really start, start hurting, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll call it, but uh, I'll do my best to only use the commands on here. That will entertain you. Are you not amused? All right, so I'm gonna come in here with arc, which I pushed on here. I'm gonna click and click. I'm gonna put that in there. I'm going to go select, double click, uh, shift click to turn that off. So that gives me the outline and then I can use follow me. There's not follow me mapped on here. So I'll use my icon, but no keyboard shortcuts other than what's here. Follow me, click here. All right. And with that, I'm going to go back to select triple click and soften and smooth that. All right. So that's my seat. I'm going to triple click and actually have a make component button on here. Okay, since I tell you guys how important it is to name your components, I'm going to give myself my one ability to use the key is to put my component names in here. So that's it. Those are the only times I'll be using the keyboard. Other than that, it's all over here on the keypad, sketchpad. All right, there we go. We got a seat. All right, now. I'm going to work from that seat. It looks like what we got is kind of a piece that goes around the outside. Um, I'm going to go look at my other, my other image real quick. Just pull this up so we can look at it. Yeah, see this piece kind of looks like it, it curls around. I'm assuming it follows at, at the same shape all the way around. Um, I just want to check on this side. Really, the, the, both sides are they're very similar, but this handle, this cool looking handle is only on the one side. I believe that's the control to recline the whole thing. But you can see a little clearer here. There, hinge, 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 uh, hinge. So, okay, so let's, uh, let's get that base under there. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come into here, I'm gonna grab this. I'm going to, I wanna copy it. So I will go to copy, come out, edit, paste in place, almost at the keyboard, and offset that. Not a lot, but yeah, something like that. And then you look, it, it actually kind of, it's actually back a little bit from the edge. Something. Dang it, option key. Something like that. All right, so if I don't have, whoa, pardon me, Mark. Uh, if I don't have the ability to soften here, well, actually, I could probably do this. 
toggle soften to get rid of those lines. All right, that's what I'll have to do. Uh, good, so do I have lines here? I do, and I have a delete key that I can use to get rid of those lines. Awesome. Uh, it does look like these corners are kind of rounded here. Look at that, that nice smoothness. Yeah, I, I was noticing that too. Let me go put one there. I can use double click to put the same one. Oops, ah, hit the wrong escape key. I'm so programmed. There we go. Whoops. Mark! Mark's creeping, man. <laughs> Get into my stuff. All right. There we go. And I will triple click again, and I'm going to toggle soft and get rid of those lines. Cool. So that's these two pieces. Um, just a quick thought. Mm -hmm. Have you checked out that save key yet? I have not. Let's see what happens when I hit it. Do I have to save first before I can use a shortcut? Oh, no. It's mapped to command S rather than, uh, or no, it's mapped to control S rather than command S. Uh. Oh, nuts. Look away as I use the main keyboard. Barbara, bar, bar, Barbara chair. Er, there we go. All right, Barbara chair. All right, so now if I'm in here, shoot. <laughs> all, my, all my hopes and dreams <laughs> dashed due to control rather than command. I wonder, I, you know, I haven't done this before. I wanna, I wanna check something out real quick. If I go to preferences and I go to shortcuts and I hit save, could I map that to control S? Something happened. It's, it's doing something. <laughs> something happened. Uh, let's see. When was this last saved? Well, yeah, it saved at least twice because it created a backup file. Well, all right then. Let's see. Let's hit, I'm gonna hit again. See if it updates that that date and timestamp. Twenty seven. It works. Hooray! Whew. I'm sweating. Awesome. All right. Uh, I think the control S is a Windows thing. It is. It is absolutely a Windows thing, but uh, I seem to have figured that out. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to. So there's some potential here for more softening. So I could actually come in here and it looks like maybe a little round corners, but I'm just going to keep this right now and make a new component. And I'm going to call this the base. This would be the base upon which everything else is built. All right. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come put this uh, piece dropping down and then start to build the rest of the chair out. So we've got a question in chat. All right. Um, is uh, performance better on Mac or PC? I've never really noticed a difference, but I'm curious what you think. I can't say that one's better than the other. Generally, it really comes down to what you're most comfortable with. Um, I would say that depending on what else you're using your computer for, that should really drive what you're doing. Uh, so that being like saying if you're gonna do a lot of rendering, and I'll probably open myself up to some people complaining that I'm saying this, but if you're gonna do a lot of rendering, take that, Mark. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was a little, little too much attitude. Um, if you do a lot of rendering, you may want to go for a Windows machine and, and leverage uh, some of the bigger processors, RAM sort of stuff you can get onto a normal uh, PC machine as opposed to Mac. But I, I can't say that there's a specific machine that's like the end all be all one platform or the other. And I'm not going to do that. We're not going to we're not going to do that debate. That's a nobody wins when you start a Windows versus Mac debate. Yeah, personally, I prefer uh, my MacBook when I'm on the go, but my desktop when I'm at home, it, it really comes down to what you prefer, what, just like you were saying. Yeah, I think that's that's solid right there. I think a lot of people work under that, that setup. Got a little extra line inside there. 
All right. So what I'm doing here is I, f I figured this spot is about the middle. Uh, so I just dropped a rectangle. I brought this rectangle out about where it looks. Looks like it's a little, the base is a little bit wider than this. Maybe not that wide, maybe like that wide. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just mock some lines right here because I have a couple different things going on. Like kind of a collar here. And then it actually looks like I got maybe a something like that. And then another arc, maybe from here. Something like that. So I'm just trying to create half of this, uh, half of the profile of the this uh, oh, stand, I guess. Right. I believe that's a pretty good representation, but let's see what happens. Kind of like, uh, never really sure how follow me is going to work till you do the follow me. So it's it's. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite things with the follow me tool is it, it's always exciting. You always end up with something really interesting <laughs> at the end of the day. That's true. Whether or not that's going to be what you intended or whether or not it's useful we is never entirely really irrelevant. know. Yeah, that's it's entirely true. irrelevant. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to come in here and drop a circle. I'm going to go straight down from this point and just put a circle in there. And I will select that circle. Again, follow me is not on here, but I don't. And I, I'm not holding that against the sketch pad because uh, when you're initially using it, follow me is probably not as often used. If I was to dedicate myself, if I was like, I'm just going to 100% commit to the sketch pad, I'd probably remap like the paint bucket tool to follow me or something like that. So I'd, I'd swap the uh, B and what I have mapped as F. I would probably switch those two. Um, I think I have a map to Zeph. I don't remember what I have anything mapped out anymore. It's all automatic. Actually, it's th that was one of the that's one of the commands that's over here on this normally. So I don't actually have it mapped anywhere, or I do have it mapped somewhere, but not a normal key that I use. Um, all right, so I'm gonna grab the circle, follow me, and click the surface. Not too bad. It's a little thick. Looks so, pretty good though for was, first try. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Considering just how hard we're winging it, it's not, not, I wouldn't complain about it. You're right. All right, so let's try this. That looks closer to what I have over there. All right, I'm going to say that's exactly what I want. All right, and I'm going to soften that. And I'm going to triple click. Reverse my faces, and I'm going to make it. Oh, I'm going to hit a button over here. Make it into a component. And I'm going to call this the stand. Because, yeah. All right, so if I look at it so far, that's not too far off. You know, this, this, if I come in here, because of the way my geometry is connected, I can take this and just raise that up a little bit because it does look a little bit taller than uh, that looks closer. So I do realize that there's some stuff going on in here. Uh, it's a little, this little shape here is kind of M shape. Um, so this is cut into a little bit, but uh, like I said, inspired by, not exact replication. That's what we're going for. Right now I feel pretty, hey, check out this save button. Boom. This may be the thing, this may be the thing that saves me. <laughs> no pun intended. All right. Um, right here, yeah, somebody's, somebody's pointing out that they use a stylus on a Huey on, Huey on canvas, which is a, a tablet. And I'm thinking, this actually feels, I, I was actually thinking that as we're going through here, having this on the side of a tablet seems near perfect. Um, it's working well with the mouse, but that was kind of where my brain was going was uh, I think about using a tablet and, and 
man, it would be cool to have more shortcut keys. Even if you had like a 3D pen or something like that, you only have a couple of buttons. This would actually work really well with the canvas. Stefan was just was saying that uh, he used it with a style, or he's using a stylus um, and with a 3D mouse, which would be great too. But this this is something that may complement as well. Um, all right, I'm gonna work on this whole chunk down here. So I got this piece that drops down. I can't tell if this is all one piece. It looks like it is. It looks like this is just one piece that kind of swoops out. So. I'm going to build that real quick. I'm going to, everything's grouped right now, so I don't have to worry about any geometry joined together, but I'm going to find the center point of the seat. I'm going to drop a line down. It looks like I'm looking for the bottom piece right here. It looks like that drops just past this collar, so I'm going to say something like that. I'm going to have that come across to well, I'm just gonna actually run it long right now. Um, escape to disconnect and reconnect. Come to here, draw that down, erase that. And then it actually kind of looks like I have two pieces here. I have one piece that comes out on the outside that goes up to the arm. And that's also that's the piece that looks like it comes down and then curves out to the footrest. And then separate inside of that is this, this is a thinner piece of metal. So I'm gonna build it like that. I'm gonna go ahead and move this point over just a touch. And I'm gonna do this on one piece and then I'm gonna flip it over. So I'm gonna try to minimize the amount of work I have to do. Work smarter, not harder. Um, all right, so it looks like first thing I got going here is there is, I'm gonna draw uh, option key again from the center. I'm gonna go to the middle of this line and pull out a rectangle that is that foot resty looking thingy. Technical term, yes. Um, oh, uh, we got a question. Is uh, smooth and soften edges a plug-in or a typical element? That is a typical element of SketchUp. Uh, it's a little tricky to find though. Yes, it is. Um, you either have to get to it from the right mouse button, uh, select geometry and right click on it, or to uh, have the soften and smooth UI open. All right, I think that's gonna work for right now. I'm gonna take the outside edges, stop, <laughs> keep going over here. <laughs> Let's just take these three sides what am, I, what am I hitting? Shift. No, control, shift. <laughs> All right, shift. Learning, learning's hard. All right, I'm gonna take these three <laughs> and I'm going to use offset. Nope, not scale, offset to pull those in. I'm gonna pull it in two inches. So I'm gonna, so right now, so I'm gonna pull it in an arbitrary amount and then I'm going to come over to my keypad. I'm going to hold down the second key and hit two and then enter. Whoops. Uh, let's undo that. Oh boy. Undo again. Undo is mapped to option backspace. Ah, uh, yeah, that, I think that's another Windows thing. Nope, I just did over here. Huh. Okay. Undo. Okay. All right. Go to select. I pick one. Shift. Two. Three lines. All right. I'm going to offset that, offset them. <laughs> Two. So one of the things I talked to, so another thing I talked to Steve about was right now the second key is a momentary button. So you have to hold it down to use it. And I, to, I, I told him, I was like, the keypad's awesome because uh, if we look at the image here, 
these little, they're blue, it's harder to tell in this picture, but the one, two, three, four, one through nine key, the zero key, this has a period on it. And then these other keys at the top, there's an X slash comma, foot mark, inch mark, meter, centimeter. So there's all, most of the shortcut keys you would need to do most input, which is really cool, like arrays. So if I wanna offset or move something, I copy it, move it once, hit three X, Right there, it's, it's all right there, which is really, really cool because like I said, that's one of the things I miss from my Mac keyboard is having that 10 key. But it does make it hard to hold down the second key and then type the other keys. So he actually talked about how, you know, making that a, a toggle switch seemed like a good idea. Yeah, that does sound like a pretty good idea. So I think honestly, of everything it does, I think that would be one of the biggest pieces that I would use. All right, um, so we have this shape. And now I'm gonna come in here with just a line and I'm gonna make the rest of this grid. Uh, so I'm gonna take this line and divide it into three pieces. To, oh, there's an even. So I'm going to take this and divide it like that. Because again, I'm being inspired by not totally replicating. All right, I don't like how this is not quite right. So I'm going to do this. Actually, no, I'm going to go draw a line here up two and erase some of this geometry. All right, I like the look of that. Now I'm gonna go in with offset. Hit the offset right on the first try. And I'm just gonna offset that, yeah, 0.5. And now I'm going to erase some lines. I'm going to get rid of these pieces in between these sections. And then I'm actually going to just delete, oh, delete. That. And now I'm going to use some, do some push pulling. Actually, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of this and make it a component. And I'm gonna call this the upper leg rest, which is the industry standard. That's the name for it, in case you guys don't know. Trust me, <laughs> don't look it up, just trust me. All right. And I'm going to push pull this out to the front. Because it looks like it comes pretty close to the front here. Mine does anyhow. I don't know about that thing. All right. And I'm going to pull this piece out halfway. Just to give, my, give myself some depth. There's definitely some more intricate details on here. But like I said, I'm, uh, I'm inspired by not, not emulating exactly. All right. So I'm going to do something like... That. Whoops. Ah. Uh. Oh, I hit. Oh, man. See, I'm just trained. My <laughs> goes back to the keyboard. I'm not trying to pull a fast one. I'm just not good at it. Um, so uh, I do need to hit. You're getting there though. Option. I, I'm more and more. I'm, I'm going to the 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 sketch pad for sure. All right, so what I need to do is, again, this is the key that's missing, is that option key. So I do need to come and tap it over here. Is that against the rules? Am I breaking the rules totally by doing that? Notice how I asked that question after I'd finished. <laughs> you guys tell me I'm not allowed to. I'll, 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 I'll honor the decision. I'm going to erase. Erase. All right. So what I want is just one solid piece. 
And not that I'm worried about this being a solid, but I am gonna go ahead and run Solid Inspector. I just like that it goes through and gets rid of my extra geometry. I'm just gonna say fix all, get rid of those extra pieces. And now I have one solid piece. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that whole thing and I'm gonna use my mirror. <laughs> but here's the thing. Mirror requires option to mirror and not just flip. But I can get around this because what I can do is I can take, I can select this, so I can use my, my, my select to pick it, go to edit and say copy. Then I can say mirror to the other side and then I can go to edit and I can say paste in place. Ooh. That's how you know you're watching someone who's a true SketchUp genius is when they uh, they start making rules for themselves and then they find a way around their own rules I don't without know. breaking them. Is, is that SketchUp genius or is that just like it's, solid it's either, BSing? It's either a sign of a SketchUp genius or a SketchUp madman. I'll take it. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, so I want to get this into the component. So I'm gonna take this one right now and I'm going to. Cut it, I'm gonna double click to come inside, paste in place, oh, but you can't do that. Uh, undo, undo, undo. So we've got a couple questions about that mirror tool you just used, is that part of an extension? Yes, that is a mirror tool called Curic Mirror. And uh, it is, I like it because it is so simple. It's literally one click to do any kind of mirroring. Um, it is free. It is on the Accenture Warehouse. And you should check out, if you haven't seen the stuff that Curic does, it's worth your time to check it out because he has some really cool extensions, especially some architectural stuff. Well worth taking a look at. And then there's a follow-up question. Uh, how can you do that without the plugin? Uh, I think uh, my answer would be scale tool, but I'm curious what you would say. I generally like scale tool. Did I call it leg rest? Mm -hmm. Yes, there you go. Um, I would use scale tool. Uh, the other thing is, of course, flip along. So anytime you select geometry, you can flip along the red, green, or blue axes. I don't use flip along very often because I struggle remembering which direction is which axis. So uh, I know it's there on the screen. I can literally see green and red in front of me, but <laughs> I still s manage to screw it up pretty, pretty regularly. Um, all right, I'm going to, because this is, this is actually softened, or this is like a cushion, I wanna, I wanna get that happening. So I'm gonna use push pull to pull it out like this. I know I'm pulling it out further than I need to but I'm going to select this geometry and I'm only selecting the one that comes out and the pieces around here. I'm not going to select these edges in the back. I want those to stay flat to the surface. So to get all of my, I could use shift to deselect these, but I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to deselect faces. That's going to give me just the lines. Deselect is part of the uh, selection toys extension, which is maybe one of my favorite, let's like a go-to extension. That's one of those tools that I have installed before I have, th that's like one of the first pieces I reinstall when I have a new version of SketchUp. So awesome tool, definitely worth, worth checking out if you don't have that already. So with just my line selected, I'm gonna save. And then I'm gonna go to Tools, and I'm going to find Fredo 6, Fredo Corner, Round Corner. Uh, that looks like a little long, so maybe we'll go down to, look at this, 1. Yeah, let's see how that works. All right, that looks pretty good. And now what I can do is... I pulled this out further so it's going to be easier to select those edges, but now i got to obviously put the whole thing back because this doesn't look... Oh, wait. Well, hold up. Oh. All right. It broke a little geometry. I can fix that. Yeah. Um, um, we got a question. The name of that mirror plugin uh, again? Just one more Curic time. Curic Mirror? Q 
Curic Mirror. C U R I C. It's the name of the developer who makes it, and like I said, makes a bunch of other architectural tools. Up. So. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about the SketchUp community is just how dedicated they are to not just uh, SketchUp as a whole, but coming up with solutions to their own problems. They just look at something <laughs> and they say, wouldn't it be great if I could do this? There's got to be a better way. And then they do it. That's that, the thing that separates them from other communities I've seen is they actually go out and do it. That is absolutely right. And that's, that's something that uh, I remember talking to uh, TomTom, and he, he's, if you guys don't know, he is a prolific uh, SketchUp developer and a team member. But asking him, you know, hi, how, why he makes the extensions he makes, and basically said most of them, laziness was actually his answer. That's what <laughs> drove him was laziness. But by that he meant anytime he did something and it took more than a few clicks to do it, he thought there's got to be a better way, so he came up with a different tool to do that thing, which I respect that. <laughs> Laziness is a is a powerful motivation motivator for sure. Absolutely. All right, so I got this piece done. Next piece I'm thinking about is a piece that comes from up here, down here, and curves forward for this next armrest. I'm thinking I'm going to do this in a couple different pieces. So this is a compound piece for sure. It's going to come this way. Looking at it from the front, it's going to have the profile like this. It's going to go this way, and that's going to go straight up. From this side, it comes down, down, and then curves forward. So it's going to, it's going to angle in two different directions. So I think what I'm going to start with is just a line. So I'm going to take a line up, and then from this point, I'm going to take my line over here. And then from there, I'm going to continue on down a little ways and then go forward. And then I think what I will do is I don't know what I'm going to do. All right, so here's one of the things that I've learned about modeling with arbitrary dimensions, which is what I'm doing right now. While it seems easier, <laughs> there is inevitably a point you come to where you're like, oh, if this was two inches even, it would be so easy. But since it's not, I'm gonna take these lines that make up this part of the outline, the vertical part of the outline, and I'm going to click move, Don't have an option key. You can't mm -hmm. copy it. Uh, I can offset. Um, no, I can't offset. It's not part of a surface. Oh, maybe I can. All right, let's see how that goes. Oops. I got excited and clicked where I didn't mean to click. No, it's offsetting this direction. Okay. <laughs> so my new approach to not being able to copy with a <laughs> with the option key is I'll take all of this, edit, copy, I'll move it back here, and then I'll edit, paste in place to put the original back. So then I'll put a line there, put a line here to close up that top piece, I'll put a line here, and now, if I want this, I want this, whatever this bottom piece is to be initially the same size as what's here, what I can do is select this surface, use rotate. Oh, I can't do that either. <laughs> All right, um, I can take that piece, <laughs> I can copy and paste it right here. And then I can rotate that like that, and then just use some lines to clean up what I got going on right here. This is one of your best streams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is just fantastic. Oh, I'm glad, so I'm glad someone's enjoying it. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so there's my there's my initial there's my framework. I'm gonna triple clean that, tri triple click that, 
make component, and I'm going to make this my uh, uh, leg rest frame. All right. <laughs> All right, Guillermo just gave me permission to use the, the, the shortcut key for that one command. <laughs> so it's as maddening out there as it is in here. Good to know. All right, I'm going to use the arc command. I'm going to throw a couple of arcs on here. Um, I want that arc to be matched as I come out. So rather than just arbitrarily doing another arc, I am going to offset that. So I'm going to select that, offset from there, back to there. Nope. Thank you, Guillermo. By the way, I didn't say thank you. I usually want to say thank you. <laughs> ah, shit. What am I missing here? I'm not getting it about to line up right. All right. I'm going to clean up my edges. And I'm going to round off the end here, too. I'm just going to grab another arc, go vertical like this, take it this way to half circle, erase the outside. All right. Um, so that's the initial. Like, so that's, that's where I'm going to start. Um, I might not get quite as fancy as what uh, Emil made, but take this, move it straight down. Doesn't quite go that far up. And it does have a little bit of flair. I'm trying to figure out if I'm trying to make my own aesthetic, which is a little more maybe industrial, a little more straight line, and not quite so much flourish. Because um, if I do come look at this, you can see he's got this like, it's totally just, it's straight up fanciness, guys. That's all it is. He's got some, some fanciness here, uh, which I don't know that I want to mess with right now. That seems like an add-on. We can put that in later. Um, <laughs> Ellis is proposing that I reintroduce the 3D mouse with my left hand and uh, <laughs> move the sketch pad to my right hand and mouse with my feet. <laughs> as much as I appreciate your faith in my abilities, I can't do that because I don't have a camera set up down by my feet. That's why. <laughs> Take that. Um, actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw another line across like this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it horizontally. I do have a little bit of a break in there. Um, I want to round those corners off, though. I don't. I, I, I mean, a little bit of straight, you know, I, I like a little bit of that, but I don't want it to be quite so harsh. So I'm going to go uh, with another arc. Do something like that. Oops. Like that. And I'm going to use push pull to just pull that arc through. And I can erase my extra geometry. Right click, orient face, get everything facing the same direction. Awesome. Um, I like the way that looks. I think that's going to work. So I, I will probably have to take that, adjust this height when I get to the armrest. Uh, maybe right now I'll just make it extra long. I'll just take that and move it straight up. All right. I'm going to triple click to select, soften that. Cool. Looks good. Obviously, it doesn't have any depth right now, so that's going to be an issue. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, select the whole thing. I'm going to save. Um, I'm going to go again into my Fredo tools, and I'm going to do joint push-pull. And I'm going to use that to add some depth to this piece. Whoa, I got something weird going on over here. Uh, 
I didn't clean something up right. That's why I'm getting that. Oh, oh look at that. See the geometry? Mm -hmm. I'd say nine times out of ten, when the software does something unexpected, it's usually due to... Well, I was going to say human error, but I can't speak for the rest of humanity. My error. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go to, again... Uh, so this is actually something somebody asked me about this. I tend to, when I use extensions, just go in and grab it out of a menu like that. Somebody asked me why I don't just have those all up all the time. Uh, and the answer is I use a lot of extensions and it's twofold. Uh, when I used to just design for myself, like I was just drawing my own thing, I would probably have more extensions open uh, because I present so often, I tend to usually ha try to keep my screen as clean as possible. So I think that that comes from that. It comes from uh, not wanting to overwhelm the UI and keep it nice and clean for you guys. Uh, I see that I made a mistake. I forgot to turn on the maintain the back face, so I'm going to undo that. Triple click one last time. Back up into tools. Fredo 6 collection, or Fredo collection, joint push pull, joint push pull, and there's a checkbox right here that says keep the original face. So grab that, pull that out. There we go. Sweet. Uh, I think uh, one of the cameras just beeped or something. Sounded like that one over there. Oh. I'm not sure what that means. Casey. Give me an interesting fact about Emil Barbershop Chair Company. Uh, sure thing. Um, let's see. The uh, founder of the company, w unfortunately, was uh, killed in a car accident, of all things, back in 1950. Uh, he was an interesting guy. Uh, came up with a lot of interesting uh, inventions. Helped out uh, with a bunch of army supply contracts during World War II because the army had a lot of uh, haircuts to give at that point. So <laughs> that's something you don't think about, right? I mean, yeah, the logistics of uh, gearing up for World War II were incredible, just on all fronts. That that's that is that qualifies as interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, at least I thought it was interesting. <laughs> I, I can't speak for everyone. At least not until the device is complete. <laughs> Casey's got plans. <laughs> All right, uh, so what I just did is I put this little, what I would call a mirror flag, just to create a surface that I want to mirror along. So I can take this piece, which is a component, and use Curic Mirror to hover over and option click right there. I had permission to use option. Uh, and that's gonna put it on the other side. I just, this is not a recommended workflow, this is just something I came up with after I used it quite a bit. Uh, it really makes it easy to mirror something from one side of a, uh, model to the other like that. All right, cool. That's that piece. Now it looks like what we got here, now we got a footrest. And this footrest is kind of a, it's connected, I, I can't tell if it's connected by once or twice. Let's go grab our other image. Okay, so it looks like it's just connected right here. So I'm a swivel or something. I think I see a second one actually a little further back, but yeah. that might just be the light. It's hard to so tell. So if it if it does swivel like that, oh, this probably just stays stationary, and then this is on a single pivot. So if you do lean back, if your feet are up here, you lay flat, but this piece kind of just rotates up to vertical. All right, we make that happen. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing a shape here. That was, that was an intelligent thing to say. I'm going to start my drawing by drawing something. I'm bring that back here. Trace that back this way. Looks like it goes a little bit past the curve, maybe something like that. Oh, run that long, run this long. Yeah. And then a couple things happen. One is there's a big arc right here comes out like that and then I'm going to put a second arc right here 
and right here, and then erase that. And that's going to give me that shape. And ooh, actually, I need a. I'm assuming these are not snug. I'm assuming there's a little bit of a. No, I'm not going to assume that. I'm going to assume. I assume nothing. All right. I'm going to take that, and I'm just going to start by just quick push pull. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker just to give myself a little bit of dimension there, you know, a little bit of a little bit of meat. Move that vertically. Yeah, something like that. I like it. Um, I am going to take that and I'm going to make that a component. Call that the footrest. And there's a lot of opportunity for some fancification, is the technical term. Um, I'm going to soften that real quick. Uh, it does look like, I think I see light coming through here. So I think if I look, yeah, so this is just a, it's not a big solid piece. It's actually going to go up, so I'm going to do something like that. I'm going to come in here and offset this and then push pull this so how far is that two inches up is all the way to the top so I'm going to come down to less than two just watching my dimension lower right see when I get to yeah about one and a half that seems nice I like that and I'm gonna soften that again Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this down. Uh, a quarter inch. And then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna offset this. Something that looks good. Something like that. And I'm gonna push pull this down. Nope, push pull, not scale. 0.25. I did not do that right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to push pull that down. Second 0.25. Enter. There we go. So it gives me a little quarter inch step right there. I'll grab it all and soften it again. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. Um, I think I do want to go in and put some kind of, cause this is the nameplate, that's uh, one of the things I saw as I was looking around, is that's where his actual, his brand was, is where it said the chair company right in the middle. It also had these kind of, you know, no slip thingies, uh, another technical term for you all out there and who are unfamiliar with the uh, barbershop chair business. No slip thingies and uh, some holes to go through. So I'm assuming that's for cleaning it or whatever. I don't know, hair to fall through. I don't know. I was always a little weirded out about that part of barber shopping. The fact that you have, you know, dead hair stuff everywhere. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Okay, anyhow. Yeah, I find it, it helps me to think about it as a express weight loss for <laughs> instead of getting a haircut. Um, it makes it a little less weird. Just slightly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm going to create, I'm trying to think of the best way to do it. You know what, here, I'm, I'm going to do this. You know what I'm going to do? No, you don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to undo those two. I'm going to. Get rid of those two lines, delete. And I'm going to create a grid here using sandbox tools. So I'm gonna go to, turn on my sandbox tools. Not that I'm actually gonna use sandbox tools, but I'm gonna use it as a quick and easy native way to create a grid. So right now I have two foot spacing. I want it more like uh, maybe four, inch. Look at that. Nailed it with the sketch pad on that one. I 
that's a little too big. Um, all right, how about uh, second three inches? All right, let's try that one. Yeah, that's it. That's the stuff. All right, so I'm going to come out like that. Now, the way that uh, Sandbox creates grids is it does create it to the exact dimension you, you put in. So since I didn't have room for another three inch here, it did pull it back short. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually select it. Let's see how many did I get? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm going to grab it. 6 in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is my middle point. So I'm going to use move from this point and s slide that horizontally until I hit the midpoint of the chair. All right, that looks, that looks perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping for. I'm going to take that now, and I'm going to move it vertically down so I hit that base. Um, I'm going to select. And yeah, I want to do this. I'm going to select both these groups, make them a group. I'm going to go into that. And no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. I don't even care. I'm not going to do it. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to grab this one. Same thing I did before. I'm going to actually go cut it. I'm going to go in context, edit, paste in place to put it in context with the raw geometry, then explode it. And now before I merge anything, before I, I put that geometry back together, I'm going to go trim uh, my edge pieces, because these are the pieces that I don't want to actually use. Looks like something did already, it already did merge to the front, but that's okay. I can still clean it up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these squares now, do a quick offset and a quick push-pull to create the little uh, indented square shape. So any of these that are partial, I want to get rid of like this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Like that. So these are the pieces that I want. Um, so this piece is. So I do have a couple of hidden lines that are happening in there. Um, I may just go to view hidden geometry and erase those lines. I don't really need them. Uh, I could have also probably used cleanup or something like that, but yeah, if you actually, do that, uh, you risk losing some other hidden geometry. Yeah. What I really want to do actually do want to clean it up because it's not going to let me offset that the way I want it to. Oh yeah, good point. So, um, I could do this, but this is, I'm already bored of this and I just started doing it, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I think if I come in here, ah man, yeah, because I don't want to mess with this geometry here. I don't want to lose my lines on the inside. So I don't want to merge faces because merge faces will make me lose all of my rectangles I already have. Um, so what I might be able to do is do something like this, nope, like this, looking straight down from above. So then all I got was the top and the bottom. Now we're talking about TomTom Tom selection toys. What I can do is I can say right click, select only uh, soft edges, which will give me just those pieces which I can then just delete. Cool. All right, now if I grab one of these. Oh, we got a question in chat. All right. Um, I believe it's uh, Jacob um, wants to know what the little keyboard you're using is, and I can answer that. It is uh, the Sketchpad for uh, SketchUp. It's on Kickstart. I'm going to post a link in chat so you can back it if you're interested in getting one. Yeah, so we're, we're playing with it. We're trying it out. We're, we're get, running it through its paces right now. See how it works. Um, okay, so what I want to do here is I want, 
I want one of these squares to, so matching what, what we got going on here, what I want to do is each of these squares, I actually want to offset. Nope, scale, man. Scale and offset, it's getting me. Then I want to push pull this up. Then I want to offset again. And then I want to push pull that all the way through to the other side. So that's what I actually want out of each of these squares. But I don't necessarily want to have to do that over and over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that, uh, not that or that, just that piece right there. And I'm going to make a component. I'm just going to call this uh, tread thingy. And I'm going to do to glue it to the horizontal and I'm going to say cut opening. I don't know how this is going to work. Oh, I got some extra geometry in there though. Um, where was that? There we go. Oh, I still have some other geometry. I'm just going to select here. side, don't I? All right, well, let's see what happens if I take this and I move it from here to here. How does that? Hmm. No cutting. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do this, but at the same time, I'm trying to think of interesting ways to do this. So what I may actually do in this case, if I, I'm just gonna take this over to the side right here. What I was thinking about with this was doing something like this. Um, and this may be one of the situations where I'm, you know, spending a whole lot of time on something that there's maybe an easier way, but, uh, I don't know. If I make this into a single solid piece, like this, and I make sure right now, oh, uh, I reverse my face, make sure it's a solid real quick. Good to go, okay. And now if I come back over here, One of the things I could do right now, I could come in and just get rid of all these interior lines real quick. I don't know. Like I said, this might this might be ridiculousness. This might not work in the slightest, but I gotta try. Take that, push pull that down to the bottom. All right. Now I can take this piece. Put it right here. Option copy it right here. Uh, 11x, enter. And now I could do, no, I can't do group select because I got extra geometry. But I can grab all these and I can move those from here to here, I forgot how many times that was, x, oh, 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 hold on, 5x, all right, and just erase right. these extras, and then I think I do something like this, grab everything, again, right click, use TomTom's uh, select only components, and then go to my solid tools, and union those things. All right, now I have one solid piece that I can 
explode. And then I can just get rid of these boundary pieces. Yeah, that worked. I mean, yeah, that worked. <laughs> I'm totally not surprised. All right, hey, that worked. That worked better than I was thinking. I was, I was skeptical. I did not know exactly how that was going to go. All right, so we'll try fin geometry. That's pretty cool. Uh, chat's yelling at us to save again. Ah, exactly. Which is a pretty good Look idea. Look at that, one button click right there. Boom, I'll save again. Hey, you know what, watch this. Saved another time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good. We're working our way down. We've gotten the lower half for the most part. Uh, just about done. We've got to put this footrest on here, but uh, I want to say this won't be, will be no problem at all, but I don't know that. It has some interesting shapes. All right, so the general shape I'm seeing right now if I come in and find my middle point, I'm going to draw a line, a reference line right here. So it looks like where this, what this does is it actually bolts right into this footrest. It comes out, it has a, a piece that comes out and turns up like this, splits into two, and then those two pieces connect to the actual foot holder on either side. So uh, pretty cool, pretty cool shape. Um, so I'm going to do that the same way, similar to what I did with this armrest over here. I'm going to start by drawing a line. I'm going to go from here, say it comes out about this far, say it goes up about that far, and then it splits off. That's a fairly good size thing there. Something like that. Um, and I'm going to put my curves in here. So this is like that. This piece, got to, I'm turning it so I don't have any uh, lines in the back for it to connect to. All right, so something along those lines. Now I'm thinking of different ways to actually model this because I can think of a few ways that we could do this. Um, let me throw it out to you guys. Should we shoot for, because I, I, I was thinking some, some follow me stuff we could do. So I could do some, some pipe kind of stuff. But because of the shape of this, the way it connects in, it actually would make a kind of a cool uh, sub D shape. So go ahead and weigh in on that. Do you want to do this with native tools or do we want to get uh, uh, subdivisional with this thing. Let me know what you think, because uh, I, could, I could see this going either way. Make this point a little bit longer. Uh, it's a cool shape, though. Uh, we've got one vote so far for native tools. One native. Don't be afraid to sign to chime in and let us know. Oh, we got one oh. for sub D. Oh, it's a battle. Yeah, it's on now. Well, we need a tiebreaker at least. Oh, we oh, got two a sub, sub D. Yep. Karsten's a sub D fan. Oh, back to native. Oh, we're back to balance again. Oh. Oh, we got another oh, three native. natives. Three natives, two sub Ds. <laughs> well, what else we got? We're close. Oh, this is exciting. It is. Whew. Sub D, back to, oh man. This uh, is too and much. And another native. And another native, so we're at four to three. Native, native, oh, native went up again. Sub D came back. <laughs> You know, that's one of the, ooh, D Doug, how's it going, Doug? How are you doing? Your vote doesn't count, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, man, it's a, it's, it is about tied. We're watching both, by the way. We're, we're going back and forth. We have, uh, uh, all right. Um, I don't know. I kind of lost count, Casey. Where do you think we're at? Uh, let me check. I, I think Native is winning just by a little bit, though. Um, I will honor that if you guys do come back with that, by the way. Um, use the touch pad and shortcut pad. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I think Native is winning. Okay. That's an interesting challenge, but uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, good idea. No. Okay. So... Native. We'll go with native on this one. We'll, we'll find a different piece. We, I'll do some sub D. Uh, maybe our uh, something. I don't know. Something. We'll, we'll subdivide something. Yeah, All we'll, right. sub D will be used before That's the right. day is done. Stress not. All right. So I think what I would probably do would be something like this. Um, get a, a piece this direction first. We'll offset Select these. You know what we need to get, Casey? And maybe you can help me with this, but we need to get, we had a, used to have some poll software. We should get something like that going again. Yeah, we need to do something about that. Be a little more scientific in our next poll. That's right. We are a soft co software company, for heaven's sake, so. Absolutely. <laughs> should be able to figure that out. Uh, we've got a question from chat. Uh, what is the difference between native and sub D? It does it have something to do with extensions? The answer is absolutely. Yes, it does. So subdivision modeling is a method of modeling whereby everything is modeled in uh, quads, in four-sided pieces. And then what you can do is you can run an algorithm on those, those four-sided pieces that goes through and smoothens all the corners. So it actually takes what starts out as like a low poly looking blocky thing and then creates a very nice smooth uh, models. We've actually done some, we have, actually have something on the calendar uh, in the next week or two, we're going to do a model completely dedicated to subdivision modeling. So it will happen. Those of you who didn't get your vote, if not in this model, most likely in this model, but if not, we'll get it at some point. So, um, All right, so I'm looking for a 2D piece that I can put some depth to. Um, I want to do the same thing here. I can't just, I want to take that as I'm looking at it now and make it wider. So pull it this way and this way. I can't do an offset that direction because it's out of plane of the curve. So I'm going to use a different extension, and uh, I think it might make Casey work to find this. Actually, maybe on Extension Warehouse. This is called a DBO push line, A-D-E-B-E-O. And what that lets you do is it lets you take a set of lines, just like push-pull, and pull them out into surfaces. See that? So that is an awesome tool. If you ever have geometry that you need to go uh, take a line and pull it into a plane, seriously cool tool. It's a great, great tool. All right, so I think you guys no noticed I am modeling half of this. I don't want to model the whole thing because the left and right are going to be exactly the same. So I'm only going to model half of it. All right, I'm going to come to this piece right now. And let's see, we'll push pull to make give this some depth. I do want to be conscious of what I'm doing here, so I'll say like an inch and a half. Sounds good. Uh, I'll throw a line out here to close up that tube I just created. And then I will grab. Ah, found it. All right. I I'm knew gonna, you could. Going to go ahead and post that link in chat. Nice. So, yeah, check out a DBO push line. It, it really is a Q, QL. It's a QL option. Um, all right, I'm going to take this, and just like I did before, I'm going to go to Tools, Ferro 6 Collection, Joint Push-Pull, Joint Push-Pull, and I'm going to pull that in. Uh, oops. 1.5, Enter. All right, so that gives me my pipe. And actually, now that I see that, if I want that to be the same, I realize I gotta push this back in. Nope. 
just standard push pull point nope oh just stop pushing buttons Aaron just <laughs> step back take a breath undo okay I'm gonna push pull this back this way point seven five enter all right that's half of it I'm gonna do some quick cleanup clean up clean up clean up clean up Huh. And I'm going to orient my faces. And I'm going to. All right. I'm going to continue to round some stuff out. I'm going to put an arc right here. And I'm going to push pull that back. I'm going to put another arc right. Uh, actually, put a rectangle here. Then I'll put an arc there we go and then I will push pull that Push pull all the way. Something's a little bit off there. Nope. Push pulled too far. There we go. That looks good. Right. Clean it up. All right. One last piece on here is uh, right down here. We actually have something. So I'm going to come over. Uh, I don't know. I'll come over one inch. going to push pull that out and that's the plate that actually bolts into our footrest here so it's gonna go like that and then I'm also gonna pull it this way falls totally inside there um, it looks like it's rounded there so I'm gonna put another arc like that Push pull that through. Cool. Um, you know, just because, well, no, I'll come back to that. Uh, and then I might do one more arc right here. So this is something you guys might see this every once in a while. Uh, normally, when you click an arc, you get this preview of an arc like that. Every once in a while, you get this where you get this dotted line. Um, when you start drawing an arc, you get the arc, and the arc is color-coded. So when I start my arc off of this line, I get that, that teal line. That teal line is telling me that that arc is tangent to this line that I'm starting from. As I pull it across when it turns purple, that line is tangent to both ends. So what happens when I click right here is I'm not starting off of a single line so it can tell me what I'm tangent to and what I'm not. When I'm starting here, I'm actually pulling a line off of three different points or three different lines so it doesn't know what to show me tangent to. So if you ever have that situation, you may just have to come in just, you know, slide inside a little bit and then get that line or group in high geometry so you can pull off of a single line, that sort of thing. Now I'm going to go like that. Whoa. What, did Mark come back? How did I get stuck inside of there? Okay, there we go. Push pull that down, and I can erase those lines. And did I, not, whew, I got a got a push pull accuracy issue going on with myself. All right, and I'm gonna erase those as well. All right, that looks like most of the geometry. I'm gonna trim this off, then I'm gonna copy it over, and then I'll probably use like a Fredo corner on it to smooth it out. Or maybe actually, maybe I'll just leave it at that because that kind of does match the aesthetic of the rest of this. So that, that I may be done once I get that finished. Um, we'll see, we'll see. I don't know what I'm doing. You're all like, uh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> all right, um, in order to cut that off, I do want to 
make this a, a component, then I can just use my component tools, solid tools to just join that. So I'm actually gonna flip this right now while it's still raw geometry. I'm just gonna go ahead and use Curic Mirror to make that copy. And then I can real quick erase these few lines and separate the two. Whoa, too many, too many. Erase those couple lines that make it two pieces. And now uh, triple click, make that a component. And this will be the foot cushion holder. That's how we roll. All right, so that, let's make sure that's as nice solid. It is. Let's make sure this guy right here is nice solid. Oh, not easy to fix. All right, now with solid tools, I want to subtract this mass from this mass. So this one's selected first, and I'm gonna say trim this one, and there we go. Beautifully done. If you didn't know better, Oh, look at that. I, I, I almost did it. If uh, I come yeah, in I here. Yeah, I spoke too soon, I guess. <laughs> Casey just retracted his praise. <laughs> if I go to component edit, high dress a model, I can see that because I had that lip, remember I made that piece, not a solid piece, it did uh, cut it out and left a piece behind. So I can just, I can delete that. There and now, we we're, go. now we're back to beautiful. Now we're back. <laughs> Watch out, man. C Casey will take his praise right back if you don't watch it. <laughs> I, well, I don't usually, but for live streams, you, you got to be... Just for me. I appreciate it. Of course. It. you gotta, you got to put yourself out there. That's right. <laughs> All right. Um, this is actually a pretty weird, complex shape, and I'm sure there's a whole lot of thought behind this. Mine's going to be a little simpler than this, I think. Um, but the idea is pretty easy. It's a rounded over rectangle connected here and then uh, a cushion on top. So let's start, uh, I'm gonna draw a line right across this arc. I'm gonna take that over to here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna take that over to here. All right, so something like that. Yeah, I can buy that. Um, I'm going to get rid of that middle line. I'm gonna what's that? Um, all right, I'm just gonna take this line and I'm gonna move it. copy it half inch. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I just wanna get a little bit of a uh, pivot point in the, in the geometry. So I'm gonna move this uh, half inch. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna take this across like that and this across like that. I'm gonna put a little, little teeny tiny arc right there. I'm gonna double click to place the same arc on each of these corners. Double click, oh. double click, double click. And now I'm gonna do another arc, a little bit bigger right here. Double click, double click, and double click. <sighs> Save. Uh, chat was just about to say that. Ha! I didn't even look up yet. <laughs> Beat you. All right. Yeah, that one-click save is nice. It is. It's it's uh, normally two clicks, so I, I am cutting my save clicks in half. Basically, the the amount of keystrokes it takes me to save the proper amount is half as much as it used to be. Thank you, Sketchpad, for SketchUp. All right. So this was just this is a working geometry right now. Um, 
what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go in and break it because what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this up to here and then pull it down the same amount. Awesome. Um, I'm going to triple click, make this a component, and because I use the term footrest, I'm going to call this my foot holder. All right. And I'm doing that so I can go in here and isolate that geometry. I don't need to see everything else. So to make this piece actually like a round pivot point, I'm just going to grab a circle, come out this way, draw a circle, and then just use follow me. I'm going to grab this circle, oh, nope. grab the circle, follow me, and just pick that geometry. I'm being a little bigger than I was expecting, but I'm going to trim that. And actually, I can use the exact same circle. I can come over and pick this circle right here, follow me, and come over here and grab this again. All right, get rid of that. Do a little bit of cleanup here. Um, there's a couple ways I could do this. I'll probably just do it the easiest way I could think of, which is to take a rectangle from the center point, or about center point, something like that. And I'll do the same thing on the bottom. So you gotta do both sides. Come in here right about the middle-ish. Just as long as I get that geometry where that breaks. And then I can select all that, intersect faces with selection, and then I can just come in with my eraser key, my eraser tool. Oh. So if you ever have this happen where your geometry breaks, um, that's because at some point during everything I was doing, this stopped being a solid. Oh, it's because it was follow me. This wasn't actually ever a full circle geometry. It was always broken geometry. The easiest way to clean that up is to go to the select key, select this, and hit delete. It may leave some lines behind, but it's going to be easier to get those couple lines rather than try to go delete all those pieces. Uh, we've got a question in chat, and I can answer this one. All right. Casey's got you. Uh, where is the space mouse and what is the white thing? Uh, that would be the sketch pad for SketchUp. It's a new piece of hardware. It's not out yet, but it's on Kickstarter. I'll give you a link to it. We're trying, we're demoing, we're demoing some, uh, the one we have is a prototype and there's, uh, there's a lot of fun stuff going on with it. It's a, it's a good product. It is so far. I got to say that, uh, I can't, I could definitely, so, I mean, just because just just it's just you and me, just because we're talking, just us, um, you guys know how I feel about the Space Mouse. I love it. I use it all the time, but I do recognize it is not the cheapest piece of hardware you can pick up. Um, with that in mind, I got to say that this is a much more approachable solution. And while it doesn't take care of the zooming that the Space Mouse does, it does take care of that maybe maybe as big of an issue or big, big of a uh, solution is that I have the ability to select or uh, do all my shortcut keys right here. I really, I'm liking this, starting to really like this. Yeah, personally, I'm a fan of the form factor. It's just the kind of thing you can stick in your pocket and go. The oh, yeah. Space Mouse is a little heavier and a little bigger. Yeah, even the travel. I have a travel Space Mouse. It sits in the bottom of my bag most of the time. But uh, it is, it's big. And it's, I mean, it's, it has to be heavy so you don't slide it around. Mm -hmm. This, exactly. I mean, this is like front pocket of my, my laptop bag. Um, all right. Boom. Look at that thing. All right. I do need to put a cushion on here. Um, yeah, so my mouse is a Logitech. It is a MX Master. So I, I do, I don't know, it'll be a while before I change that in for anything. I'm, I'm just 
I started using Logitech a long time ago because it was programmable, and man, I don't think I've really found a mouse I like in a long time. Yeah, I, I use Logitech as well, but mine's like one of those yeah. dollar store mice you get that breaks if you drop it or whatever, so yours is a little nicer. <laughs> well, we were, we were talking about that. It's, it's, it's a question of usage, right? If, uh, like you're going to buy a new pair of shoes. Oh, yeah. Shoes absolutely. are worth spending some money on because you spend all day in them. You stand on your feet oh, all definitely. day. So I, I, I see mice in that same, uh, same realm where I probably, you know, spend more time with my hand on the mouse than maybe I do with my hands and my shoes. Wait a minute. You knew where I was going with that. It didn't come out the way I wanted. <laughs> uh, well, Aaron, maybe you shouldn't put your hands in your shoes so often. <laughs> this is why I love live streams. You never know what's going to be said and what's going to happen. Yeah, it's always going to be something, though. Oh, all yeah. Right. <laughs> Let me Absolutely. Come in here. And uh, all right, to make my cushion on top, uh, I'm just going to close up my rounded rectangle. That is cut off this geometry from here so then I can do a quick offset like that and then a quick push pull like that I'm gonna go big again I erase some of these extra lines erase these extra lines uh, select this geometry just that geometry I'm gonna soften real quick and now the I'm going to use I'm going to use a round corner again, but the only piece I really need to use well actually you know what let's 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 think about that. One of the things I could do so one of the things round corner does is it gives you a symmetric corner, so it's always that uh, tangent to both lines round corner, Let, similar to what a sub D will do with with that geometry. So it's always going to give me that nice quarter circle roundness. Um, this is actually not that. It's actually like kind of laid over a little bit more. Um, there, ooh, yeah. Keenan just mentioned, or hopefully I'm saying your name right. If not, I apologize. That soap, skin, and bubble will, would make it too. We could we could take a look at that as well. Uh, but just as a thought, I might try this real quick. I'm just gonna try this real quick. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm gonna come down a short amount, so maybe like half inch here, and I'm gonna draw another line, maybe. A little bit longer, maybe inch and a half here. And then I gotta turn on X-ray to make this happen. But I'm gonna go to draw Bezier curve and draw a line from here to here. And I'm gonna curve like that. So I'm gonna say I want to take that curve all the way around. So you'd see I'm drawing it perpendicular to one of the sides. And then what I can do is I can uh, click this line and I'm going to use follow me but in order to do follow me I do have to get inside the shape there we go click here let's see how that worked out did not work out perfectly but I think we might be able to salvage what it did alright so ran into a little bit of an issue here the way it goes <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit of an issue. Uh, I don't like that. Um, so we've got a question from uh, Christopher. What are we making? Uh, is it a barber chair? Yes. Yes, it is a barber chair. Nailed it. So we'll grab all of this. Intersect faces with selection. That should get me my cup. Oh, no, it's just getting worse. All right. <laughs> undo. 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 I'm not quite sure what went wrong there. I'm going to give it one last attempt, and then we'll do something different. All right, I'm going to try moving this point down. Oh, see what happens? Oh. Nope. Wow, I'm not quite sure what happened. Oh, if, it, if I just do this, is this enough to cut it and make it work? No. Uh, not quite. It's very what is a scale issue? How big is this? How big are these pieces? I might be asking it to. 
is less than an eighth of an inch. Let me try something real quick. I want this to work. So this is a component oh, right now. Um, the long part of the shape might be sharper than the corner is uh, set for. Ooh, yeah, so it's lapping over itself. You, yeah. I think, are right. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, I'm not even going to try to say your name because I'm going to get it wrong, so I apologize. <laughs> but thank you. You're right. Good call. Okay. Uh, this brings us right back down here. And then we'll take this, and let's see what happens when we soap bubble this thing. Um, so soap, oops, wrong button. Soap, skin, and bubble is a classic tool. It's been around for quite a while. Uh, in fact, I don't know that it's even been updated for quite a while. Um, it still works fine, though. It's a it, great tool. It really does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the outline here. I'm going to say skin that. And it's going to give me an initial grid. I think that's a little bit too big. So I'm going to maybe triple that and say 30 divisions. Ooh, that's maybe too many. 25. Oh, no. I meant 20. Yeah, that'll work. It's a footrest after all. Yeah, and then smooth. I'll hit enter. And there we go. It creates that geometry. Now, what I can do is I can take that geometry and I can apply pressure to it. So let's see, let's I usually start with 100. You can see that that puffed up ever so slightly. Here, let's go to, let's get rid of our hidden geometry. And, uh, not, not great. So let's try, uh, let's try five times that. So I'm going to put 500 in. Maybe a little too much. Yeah, a little too much. All right, so let's split the difference. 250. Not too bad. That would work, I think. Not bad at all. Um, Looking good. Yeah. All right, so I like that. I'm going to escape out of here. I'm going to... one. Of, so one of the things it did... And just push this straight up. This is a very telltale soap, skin, and bubble profile. See how it, it kind of closes down at the edges there? Um, I want to give it a little bit of lift up. So I am going, since it's a separate group, it's real easy for me to come in and just push, pull, pull this up just a touch. Then I can take this, move it back down, right on top. Then I will explode this, and then I will triple click select everything and soften and smooth. You know what? I'm pretty happy with that. That looks yeah. pretty. I, I pretty think it's sweet. looking good. All right. What time are we at now? On oh, not even two o'clock, man. We I got should, plenty of time. I should relax. I should stop modeling so quick. <laughs> I don't think I'm modeling quick. Uh, just, just joking around there. All right. Um, so let's, uh, let's save one button. That's how we do. All right. So a uh, couple pieces, there is a hinge point right here that ties back into this. Again, I want to get something like this. I'm not going to go as fancy. Look at all this, look at all this fanciness he has on here. Mine's going to be a little more utilitarian, just like the rest of my chair, but I'm going to have a point here that's going to pull out and go into that piece. And then we'll work our way around here and put the other piece back here and get the armrest back and headrest on here. So, oh, needs to rotate. Okay, we can do that because I can grab this piece. I can use, oops, I used my shortcut here, but I could use it here too. And then I just got to go find the center of this because the center of this is what I built the uh, pivot point off of. And now I could actually... Rotate it. There we go. Piece of cake. All right. Um, so I want to do something, like I said, similar to what they're doing here, but I do want to follow my kind of the aesthetic I have set up with this kind of uh, squared and round bar kind of shape. So I want to do something like that down here. I'm going to go into this piece right here. 
It's embarrassing when somebody sees your backside <laughs> like that. Um, I'm going to figure out where I want that shape. I mean, something like this. That fits. Okay. So I'm going to take this, these two lines. I'm, so I'm noticing myself, you guys are asking me how this is going with the, the keypad. I like it, I'm definitely getting more used to it. I've spent so much time using my pinky to hit the shift key on the keyboard or even with uh, the 3D mouse. Shift is over here on the far right side. So you can see that, I blow that back in. So it's right here, I, I, I reach over with my pinky and hit that. So what I'm finding is when I come over to do this, shift is right here, it's a nice big key. You can kind of see it on the, on the uh, the image here, nice big key, it's easy to hit, but because I've spent so much time using my pinky to hit it on the far left side, <laughs> I keep coming over here to where that fake undo button is, and uh, it's getting me, that, that's my own learning, that's me, that's not, uh, the pad's not doing anything wrong on that one, but uh, all right, so I'm gonna grab these two pieces, I'm going to copy them, then I can erase this extra geometry exit out of the group, edit, paste in place. Now with this geometry, I'm just going to uh, push pull down like that. So I just have that cap like that. Um, and now I can take this and th actually make that a component. arm, rest, front, bracket, obviously. Um, and I can actually get rid of this inside geometry. I don't need that. Whoa. Reverse this, and then once more, I'm going to go into tools, not the last time probably, but I'm gonna use joint push pull to add some, can I do both? If I go shift click both of them, I should be able to go to joint push pull, pull that whole thing out. Yeah, three eighths of an inch sounds perfect. Yeah, that looks cool. Um, and now that I want to come up to, I'm gonna just create a point that I want to use. I'm gonna say this point right here is where I want to set my pivot. I'm sure Emil, when he made this chair, did a lot more scientific-y type work to figure out like where would the center of mass be and there's probably some prototyping involved, but Let's face it, guys, I'm no Emil, whatever his name is. All right, so, oops. I drew all of that out of context. So I'm gonna go edit, paste in place. All right, now I have just what I need to draw that bracket. And again, I'm gonna try to go with that same, similar aesthetic to what I've had so far. So I'm gonna do something like this. See, we'll come across, yeah, half inch. We'll go this way, 0.5. Give me, look at me use that number pad like it's nothing. All right, so that's going to be the base. That's going to come up to. So I'm going to put something circular right here. Something like that. Oops. That was not what I wanted to do. Undo that. It's because of that piece? Why am I getting no circle? Don't argue with me. There we go. Alright, I'm going to take that through to there. Uh, 
Um, now I'm gonna put, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing now. Now <laughs> I'm making things up. This has become a design process thing where I'm gonna try some things and see how they look. I am noticing that, so you guys know I use, I do use that 3D mouse a whole lot, and I'm really, really noticing right now the difference between using the mouse to zoom and, and this. I'm, it's almost getting to me. Something's out of plane. Let me draw this straight up. Straight over, straight down. Let's get rid of these. Oh, because this is this was this was aligned with the center. That's why. Okay. Oops, my mistake. All right. Take that back to there. Nope, wrong one. Uh, all right. There. And then connect that up. Still not closing. Something out of plane again? Let's see. Here's how I usually test that. Draw a bunch of lines and erase them. Yep, something wasn't, something's not right. Let's see. Ooh. Huh. All right, now you're just messing with me. <laughs> Something's weird, and I don't yeah. know what. I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm just. Time for that old old uh, standby of uh, some brute force modeling. We have no more time for elegance here. All right, so. rid of that and let's push pull that through to there beauty beauty pull that down to there once more from here to it's not breaking the plane something is still out of plane um, one of my favorite things to use is in styles lines this right here, where I color things by axes. This is a great tool to make sure that stuff is where it's supposed to be, which obviously something here is not. Um, but I can't, for the life of me, figure out what's wrong. Why are you wrong? All right. Let's see. Oh. Oh. Well, we got it back to where we're supposed to be. Just don't know uh, exactly why. All's well that ends well? I don't know. Again, why why are you being this way? Is this is this cuz it's Friday? <laughs> Could be. Man, something. All right, let's hold on, hold on. Now, now I just got dumb there for a second there. All right, let's just copy this back over and close this thing up and be done with it. All right, I don't know what was happening. I don't wanna know, maybe, I don't know. Um, I should point this out though, as I make this, this piece right here, as, look at look at this uh, geometry right here. This was the joint push-pull geometry. This is something that I think all Fredo stuff does. It does, it quads everything. So it makes four-sided pieces uh, wherever possible and it ends up with these hidden lines. So sometimes you might end up, if you're using a Fredo tool, you may end up with extra geometry uh, depending on how it offset and created. Sometimes, this is the issue, you can see right here, this line right here actually isn't parallel the green axis, it's slightly off. So somewhere when it push pulled that geometry out and thickened it, uh, it fell slightly off axes. So 
not a big deal. Most of the time, if you're doing that, you're kind of creating kind of an organic -y kind of shape anyhow, or uh, maybe not organic -y, but kind of a flowing shape. So uh, I'm not too hung up on that being absolutely perfect, but all right, we can go back to just black. Get rid of that. Okay, there is our bracket. Um, In geometry, get rid of our, uh, oops, I'm a little tiny space over here. There we go. Awesome. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together. Um, I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put the armrest in first because that's going to kind of establish where the back cushion goes and that will establish where this last uh, bracket goes. So let's see, how do you want to do this? Um, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to put an arc onto this piece. And then uh, I think we will, I will do similar to what they have here. It's kind of a piece that sandwiches on both sides and then kind of goes back. So maybe we'll do, uh, I'll throw a circle right here, and then maybe something like uh, option. Something like that, I think. Take that back. Actually goes all the, this, whatever this, this piece of hardware goes all the way back to the very back. So I'm gonna take it like that. I'm gonna pull this. Actually, so I want this piece to be the same thickness as this piece to start with. I might change that, but I'm going to grab it, push, pull. So I'm going to select, pre select, push, pull, then grab my from and two point off of that front piece. Smooth that. I'll grab that and option copy over like that. That's kind of cool looking. I kind of like that. I, I like how that looks. Um, let's see. And I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a line at the midpoint, perpendicular to this piece, and pull that over. All right. I like that so far. And now I need to build the armrest up on top of that. Um, yeah, so this part, I'm just gonna let this hang out back here for now. Uh, it's gonna get cut off and joined up, but first I'm gonna come in and put an armrest in here. I'll make this a component. Arm rest support. Oh, I hate naming stuff. It's the worst, you guys, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll throw another rectangle in. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of, what I'm creating right now is I really just want a work plane. Um, so I'm just gonna hit shift and get a large rectangle over the top. Um, I wanna come in similar, again, I'm not trying to go with the flowy, but I do want it to be a, a, a nice shape. So I'm trying to figure out what, what exactly do I want to do. I think what I'll do is something like something like this. I come over. I do like it's a little wider and then it kind of tapers in. I think I might go back and then that is 
I think it has a little bit of an angle cut to kind of flow into that other piece. I know, I just said a lot of things, things were said, um, but I'm going to try to make what I said make sense. We'll go like that, we'll go like that. Oh, um, uh, one click save time. Oh, you guys. <laughs> that's an excellent idea. That's what I was saying. Oh, you guys, that's an excellent idea. <laughs> Click there. All right, so maybe, maybe that's my shape. And by maybe, I mean that is definitely the shape I have just created. One more arc right here to round off a little bit of a, there we go. Okay, so that I'm gonna push pull up. That's my armrest shape. Um, I definitely want to round that over. Uh, so I could do the same thing, I could grab this, I could go to Tools, Fredo 6, Fredo Corner Round. Oh, and then exit without doing anything. That is something I could do. I did say I could do that. Totally right. Um, let's try that one more time. R Fredo Corner, Round Corner. This time let's uh, hit the check mark and see if that turns out better than when I just left. Yeah, that's much better. All right. Uh, we've got another question in chat. Um, All right. What is the uh, thing on the table where your left hand is? It's not the 3D mouse. It and is I can nuts. answer that again. It's a project somebody is running on Kickstarter. Uh, they sent us a prototype. It's an external keyboard specifically for SketchUp. I'm going to go ahead and post a link in chat and so you can check it out and can, you can back the project if you're interested. Um, I made that a little bit too long, I think, so I'm going to use scale to squish it back just a touch. Um, well, we do have a, a whole bunch of new people who weren't on here before, so yeah, we'll, we'll just keep throwing that, that news out there. This, this is uh, something new we're playing with, Sketchpad, rather than uh, follow the link that Casey just put up. Those of you who did just show up, I can also... Flash this in front of you. This is what it looks like when you can actually see it, and it's not a little tiny, you know, what 20 pixel box icon right here. Um, the other thing, since we're pausing, I just want to throw this out here. Uh, if you are not already planning to attend 3D Base Camp in September 2020, and you're interested in buying a ticket but waiting for an awesome sale, now's that time. If you go to our Base Camp website, sketchup.3dbasecamp.com and uh, click on tickets and you put Aaron Hookup in as a coupon code. It'll knock $200 off any ticket you're interested in buying. So that's a pretty sweet deal. Uh, do that. Come hang out with us. Let's spend some time at Basecamp together. It'll be fun. It'll be awesome. It's, it's going to be a good, good time. Um, uh, Marconi's asked if I tried it with the 3D connection. I haven't. The way I look at it, I got two hands, so I got to prioritize. Um, if I was to bring this back in, if I was to have both, like this, I have so many buttons mapped over here that I don't think I would jump off to use this. Having said that, if all I had was the puck, which is you know a, a very common solution, is just that one that's just a little puck. I could see having that next to this, using the puck to rotate, and then hopping over here to use the keypad. That seems like that's a solid solution. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, um, I should have grabbed my nice other budget solution right there. Yeah, that's that's uh, that would be about half the price of what this this costs right here. So you pick up uh, just the puck for probably what eighty bucks, something like that on Amazon. Yeah, something around there. And then another 60, 55, 60, 50, I can't remember what it is. For this, you're, you're yeah, that's, that's, not a bad, that's not a bad setup. You're under 150 bucks, so this is, this is $300, I think, for the big 3D connection mouse. 
Um, so that would be a very nice option. That'd be a nice alternative because without it, with just the puck, moving like this and then hopping over and using the full keypad, I, I struggle a little bit with that uh, personally. So that actually might be a nice, uh, nice in between, nice option. You're right. Good yeah, call. Um, also, I just wanted to mention since we started the stream, I already noticed we had, there's another backer on Kickstarter. All right. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I will say honestly. Well, I'll I'll save my final verdict till the very end. Um, all right. So this is the armrest. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get my one last piece, which is the uh, the other uh, bracket back here on the back. I'm gonna get that modeled first before I swap everything over to the other side. All right, so um, I'm gonna hop in here. I'm gonna say that this other piece is gonna go oh, here. Grab this. Offset. Oh, I used the wrong tool. I used, I used my mouse. Sorry, guys. Cheater. Is that going to fit? Yes. But you know what? This. I'm undoing a bunch. All right. I want to go to view and I want to unhide the rest of my model. I'm going to take this line and I'm going to offset it. I want it to be the same size bracket as what I have up front. So when I hit offset, I'm going to go like this and come to, I got to get a reference line. There we go. Now take that point to there and then get rid of those lines. And now we put a line like that and a line like that. And this is what I'm going to copy. And now I'm going to get rid of all this, all this mess. And I'm going to exit back out. And edit paste in place. And now I can push pull that down to the same depth. And then I will make a new component. Uh, Armrest bracket back. I don't know. Now when I edit in there, I can go back into my high dress of model. There we go. And then same thing. Did I have a, did I put a number in here? About three eighths of an inch. So if I triple, triple click all that geometry. Tools. Joint push pull. of an inch. All right, there's my rear bracket. And now I will build that up. Whoa, I didn't put that in the right spot at all. Okay, fortunately, I think if I hide this, I should be able to move that one segment over. All right, cool. Um, I should say I had kind of a kind of a funny thing happen with the 3D mouse because I do have you guys already know this I have all kinds of shortcuts on there, whatever like twenty some keystrokes mapped to my mouse, and uh, I had somebody a coworker come by and say they're having a problem with the mouse and they're asking me how I had stuff mapped and they couldn't figure something out, so I went in and started changing a bunch of things to try to help him find out you know how could we solve the problem he was struggling with. And I changed some settings, and then when I was done, I'm like, okay, now I'll just hit reset to go back. I hit reset, went back into SketchUp, and I'm like, man, my model's acting funny. <laughs> <laughs> I could not figure out what was going on as I was zooming. It was just, it was weird, and it was, and then I hit a shortcut key, and it didn't work, and I was like, what is going on? And I realized I had reset all of my settings for my entire 3D mouse. That was not awesome. That was that was upsetting. That was yeah. That that would be very upsetting for me, anyways. So now I my problem is I kind of reset them, but not really, and I haven't had a chance to dive in and do like serious modeling since then. So 
I don't know. It could get bad. It, it, whenever, whenever that comes back around, it could get messy here in Boulder, Colorado. We'll see what happens. All right. Um, so this is a funky piece. It's really hard to tell. So this looks like this comes up and has a piece here. And then I think there's two pieces. I think the chair has an arm that sticks back like that. And then there's a separate piece that comes off of the back of the chair that connects this piece to this piece. And I think it's like a compound hinge, um, something like that. So I'm going to make exactly something like that. Uh, we're going to come in. This is going to do something like, here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to divide this into three pieces, and then I'm going to take that back to there to there. I'm going to drop that down, and that's going to be the piece that I'm going to take off into connect into the chair. But now I think I'm really at the point where I have to put a back on here. I can't do a whole lot more modeling until I do that. And I'm obviously very apprehensive or tentative about this process um, because this is a, it's an unusual piece. I'm not exactly sure even how to start it. I'm going to draw a line up the back from there. Um, I guess I look at it from here. I have something like this. You can say it comes out about the same as the front cushion. It's going to go up. In case you guys are wondering, this is totally how real ergonomic designers do it. <laughs> you hop into 2D and go, yeah, that looks about right. All right. I'm going to throw an arc on here because it, it's one of the few pieces I know absolutely happens. Yeah, that looks, that looks right. I'm going to take that and rotate it. All right, that's one of the planes of the piece I'm making. So the piece I'm making is going to be a uh, compound, a compound curve kind of thing. Um, Yeah, I can't think about this anymore because I just got to do it. Just got to do it. No more thinking. All right, so I'm going to temporarily group this shape. And then I'm going to draw a separate shape using this as a reference. Um, I'm going to, again, just creating a work plane. This is my, my, my piece that I can work on. Uh, and I'm going to put a couple curves on here. then I'm going to offset. Yeah, that's okay. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I have time to think. I just got to do some stuff. So, well, you know, I got to say, Prototyping, building, whatever you want to call it, whatever whatever it is you do, I think that doing it virtually is pretty nice, <laughs> right? I mean, you don't have to like go buy materials or have to go carve this out of foam first to see if the shape's gonna work. I can just kind of throw it in here and see what sticks. All right, make that into a group. And I'm going to make this into a group, soften everything beforehand, and then I'm going to see what happens when I grab these two pieces. I open up my solid tools, 
and I create a intersect. Not too bad. Not bad at all. But it's not what I wanted. So I'm going to undo a couple times because I think, whoop, nope, undo, undo. What I really want, actually, here's what I know what I want. <laughs> I want that. I want a 2D plane that I can use joint push pull on to, to extend. So I'm going to take this surface, intersect face with the model, and get just that flat plane to start with. OK, that's my back. That's what I want. All right, now I know, now I know what I want. All right, I'm going to explode that. Um, now, normally, I've been using uh, joint push pull a lot. It really, it's a great tool. I mean, it's, it's an awesome way to do this, this sort of work. Um, I'm going to do a couple things. I know Karsten's asking for sub D. I love the idea of doing sub D, but I just, I think I got an easier solution without it on this one. You know how much I like sub D, man. Um, but I just think I have an easier solution here. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my one button save, pew, um, which should probably, one button save should probably be on the Kickstarter page. That's probably the difference between getting funded and not. I have to let Steve know about that one. Um, so normally, let me show you this. When I go in here to join, push, pull, the standard joint push pull on a curve like this, when I, when I pull in, the, the inside face is going to follow the curve and it's going to get smaller and smaller. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So as I come in, see how it gets tinier? Eventually it'll lap over itself. So there's different kinds of joint push pulls. What I want to do is I want to make this absolute the same depth all the way through. So I want to do it like it's a, a straight push pull in one direction. So one of the things you can do is I can come in here to joint push pull. And I'm going to use a, I think it's vector push pull. I'm going to click and I'm going to tell it to follow the green axes. And that way I can pull it just straight out. So I want it to come out just like that. Well, just a little bit because I'm just making the hard back. That's the hard back, not the cushion. Ah, oh, I forgot to put that button again. Is it too late? No, it's not too late, silly. Super duper. All right. What I need now <laughs> is I need my original shape back, the shape I had originally. Um, so I'm going to have to do something. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. I do this all the time. I get like 20 steps into something and I go, oops, I need something from 20 steps back. So here's what I've found to be the best way to do it. I'm going to take this geometry right now. I'm going to triple click. I'm going to make it into a component Oop, with my make component button over here. And I'm going to call this uh, well, the seat back. And now I'm going to edit and hit copy. Now I'm going to undo a lot. I'm going to undo all the way back to. Actually, to this, until I get to this point and I have this shape. Um, I don't care about this shape anymore. And actually, this shape, I can just scale it up like this. And now to get my seat back that I already had over there, if I hit Edit, Paste in Place, even though I undid the creation of those steps, it's still copied in memory. So by hitting Paste in Place, I've basically created a brand new timeline <laughs> <laughs> in which that geometry existed before the geometry that created it. So kind of a uh, Avengers Endgame thing just happened right there, in case you, you, were, you were watching. Um, that's cool. All right, so that's good. That's what I wanted. What I was looking for before was this geometry right here. So I'm going to explode this. You know, again... People ask all the time, what's your favorite command? And I may just have to say that it is undo. Because, man, that's a, that's a good one. 
All right, so what I want to do, the reason I did all of that was to take this offset, shift in a little bit like that, so I get a smaller version of the front of that cushion, which I can then take and push pull back here like this. Actually, I made that a little bit too small. Um, let's try that again. Offset just a touch. There you go. And now what I can do is I can take that, push, pull it back. Then I can select in this, in this group, just the front face, not the whole thing. I don't want to intersect with all the geometry, but just the front face. I can take that and I can say intersect faces with model. And I'll give me that space, right? That shape right there. I can take that shape right now. I can come into tools, Fredo six collection, joint push pull, or Fredo, no, joint push pull again. And uh, this one I actually do want to kind of, I'm okay with it tapering a little bit as it comes in to get that. I, only, I think I'm a little too small. I'm hitting my teeny, there you go. All right, and then, well, there's a couple things I could do from here. I'm going to grab this. I'm gonna try round corner. Like I said, I think I might be too small, so I might have to scale up to make this work. But I'm gonna try my Fredo corner round. Let's see if two inches works. Nope. 1.5. Hooray. Right. It worked. Yeah, something weird happened here, but that's not something I can't. Boom. Perfect. All right. So that was a multi-step process, but hopefully that all, uh, made sense. I have a cool way to create that compound cushion. Okay, so we got some more connecting to do. I gotta create a bracket that drops down right here, has a connection point for this piece right here, and a connection point for this piece down here. Um, my vertical piece is in plane, so I can actually just start with a rectangle Pull that out, and then I try to keep this as simple as I can. Um, angle this. Hmm. Once again, don't know what I'm doing. Go draw a line parallel to that parallel there. Draw a line perpendicular. Just get it closed. All right, so something like that is my bracket. Oh man, that is really close to even lining up. Look at that. That's pretty nice. Oh, that is nice. I mean, as intended, no, nah, not really. I have no idea what I'm doing still. All right, so I'm going to take, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab this, plus this, plus this. I'm going to unhide the rest of my model. And I want this, this side of that bracket to line up with this bracket if possible. So I'm going to go ahead and hit move. I'm going to slide it this way till it hits. Why am I not getting inference? There we go. All right. And now, where does that, that connect straight back? So I'm going to go, I'm going to round, I'm going to round some of these corners off. It looks a little, it's a little too uh, sharp right now, but I'm just gonna get this out here for right now. Okay, so there's one bracket. 
And then my second bracket, uh, I want to have make that seat back bracket. You know, I find it funny that people do that. They say what they're typing out loud as they type it. I know I just did that, but I, I, I still find it odd that I did that. <laughs> Especially since I have Keycaster on, you guys could actually see what I was typing. <laughs> cool, uh, we've got a question in chat. Uh, Alrighty. What buttons on the keypad have you not used so far, or have you used all of them already? Ooh, good question. Let's look. Um, I haven't used the paint bucket tool. I haven't used orbit, pan, or zoom because I'm doing all of that with my mouse. Um, so that's something of you. That's that's an interesting point. Uh, the rest of them, though, I've used the pencil tool. The here, let's let's get a visual aid up. I've used pencil tool, rectangle, circle, eraser a lot. Push pull, uh, scale. Yeah, I think I've used all the rest of them except for these two right here. These two and the zoom commands. Hmm. So. Seems like a good layout then. It does. So these ones over here, I should point this out too. Uh, these are not standard commands. The hide, unhide, last, unhide all. In the documentation, he actually tells what, what keys they're mapped to. I have different functions mapped to those keys, so I did not remap these. Because um, I was afraid I'd never get them back. But uh, if you wanted to, to take full advantage of these keys over here, you could remap to those, those keys also. Um, all right, so back here, I'm seeing what is going to be an issue. Once I add thickness to this bracket, it's not going to line up here, so maybe I can go like this. Maybe I'll take that piece, angle it back more, and then I'll select it, push pull, and push it the same thickness as this piece. Yeah, that's okay. I don't love it. I need to do something more to that. Um, I'm going to temporarily group this. And I'm going to take a copy of that group right here, and I'm going to spin it 180 degrees, bring it over here, and then I'm going to rotate it like that. Ooh, that's sick. Okay, I like this. Um, going to explode, going to Explode. I was really close. Look at that. I was really close to, to having that be perfect. Um, but it's not. It's not perfect. But it's close enough. I'm going to grab these. I, I'll clean it up. I'm going to grab all of. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I could do it now. Let's see. If I come in here. All right, intersect with selection. Hmm. I didn't quite, it didn't quite lap right on this side, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Oh, so close. A teeny tiny little thing. Uh, that's okay, because I'm not terribly concerned about that level of geometry. I'm not going to fabricate from this at this point. Here, get rid of this, get rid of that one little tiny line right there. Like that. I know this is gonna, this is gonna throw some stuff out of uh, planes, so we'll have to manually retriangulate, but uh, this is a last minute addition that I thought would be cool, so. 
there. Yeah, something's not quite right there. Oh, just hide the stuff that's in the way, man. Come on. Oh, it's amazing how long I'll spend ducking my head and like looking around corners to see past something that I could just hit hide for. <sighs> yeah, that's a thing I do. Oop. No, what do you mean no? Sorry, I'm not going to spend more time on this. I'm going to get done, I promise. We're getting there. You know, there's there's uh, people out there who enjoy doing math and things. Probably would have had a very accurate, very correct way to do that in one go. I am not one of these people. There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry about that detour, but I thought it was kind of a cool... Eh, now that I finished it, it's not that awesome either. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there we are. All right, so I'm going to round some corners off again to kind of match what I've, what I've set up as my, my kind of my aesthetic here. Uh, I'm going to grab all this, Command X, head in here, edit, paste in place, and then get that same brown corner I've got on the other ends, like that. Um, no, that's not where I should have put that. I should have put that. Hold up. I gotta figure out where that intersects. There we go. Right up to there. Use my I don't think I did a half circle there. We did something else. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. All right, let's soften and smooth that. That's what I was looking for. All right, now I'm going to clean this guy up, get a uh, corner right there, corner right there, push that through, push that through, clean up, clean up. Ah, don't have a 3D mouse over there. <laughs> it's starting to get to me. It's starting to get to me. Um, And then the last couple curves are going to be right here. There. Oops. Wrong way. Oh, I should probably throw a little curve up at the top of that piece too. Oh man, I just realized I gotta put a headrest on this thing still. Quite cool. Okay, 
I'm going to throw another flag in. I'm just going to make one of these shapes just so I can use my mirror tool to mirror this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. Awesome. And uh, let's unhide our cushion. Dang. Wow. It came together really fast at the end. That really did. That's, That's very well the done. power of mirroring right there. All right, yeah. so one last piece. We've got to put this headrest on here. Um, I do have arc on the keypad. Was I hitting the, you know what? Again. Once you get head down, sometimes I forget to talk. Sometimes I forget my shortcut keys. Sometimes I forget to breathe. I have, some people have sleep apnea. I have 3D model apnea. Um, I'll be modeling, just go, because <coughs> I forgot to breathe. But uh, yeah, that is over here. Um, gonna, I'm gonna make some assumptions on how this all looks. I think it's a round shaft that rises up that the headrest is on. So I think it's something like that. Um, something like that. And then I think it has, I'm gonna assume it has some, some kind of a, a joint there. So I'm gonna just do a real basic uh, rectangle right off the middle. Pull the rectangle out like this, make it a square. And then draw a couple lines. And actually, no, I'm not. First, I'm gonna push, pull that up, give that a little bit of depth and get rid of Uh-oh. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Hmm. That was weird. That was unusual. Well, now you're messing with me. <laughs> all right. Grab all this and intersect it with itself. All right. Now, are we cool? Are we cool? Yes. Hooray. Yeah. Taking it personally. All right, I'm gonna take these two, this line, divide, this would be super basic hinge, but uh, I'm sure there's actually more to it than this, but this is what I'm going to do right now. Uh, the arc. And to get that same arc, I'm just going to copy this over. Oops, wrong piece. All right. Nope. Okay. And then I'm going to grab all that. Make component. Headdress shaft. And then... It looks like the Aaron, I don't like the way you put Steve in quotes. Like, are you suggesting that like I'm Steve and this is my own product? Is that what you're getting at? I'm not. I'm not Steve. Um he said he was gonna try to try to try to catch it. Um, I don't know if he did or not. All right, I'm gonna take that. 
And like I said, I know there's more to this than this, but it's really hard to make out much on the, uh, the image. So I'm going to kind of not try too terribly hard to do too much stuff here, but uh, enough to, enough that I can tell this is supposed to be a headrest. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to take this. And I don't know what I'm doing anymore, but I'm going to do it anyhow. I'm going to try taking this. I'm going to hit that one button save real quick. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and I'm going to joint push pull to give myself some depth and then take that immediately and go to round corner. That that was not that was not it. There we go. Beautiful. Get me that nice soft looking headrest. And then the last piece I gotta get in here, I gotta get uh, something to connect to. So I'm going to come in to this, unhide rest of model, and I'm just going to go shift, take that back to here, turn on x-ray, and I'm going to do an arc matching up to this half of this circle. that back that way. There we go. So I realize it leaves a little to be desired, but you know what it is when you look at it. Um, okay, I gotta do this though. Oops, turn them hidden. It's not quite, it needs to be a little bit wider, I think. This part, shift it out one. All right. Oh, I should probably do some. This something's got to happen back here, right? So, one last thing I'll do here is I'll come in and I'm just gonna throw a little geometry on here that this is gonna go into. Again, there's probably something pretty like official that actually happens back here, but for me, I'm going to do this. I'm going to offset this circle a bit, something like that. Uh, and we'll take that straight back so it hits the face. This and this intersect with each other 
And I can real quick hop inside here, get rid of this extra geometry. Ooh, this is a narrow space. This is hard to navigate without a 3D mouse. Actually, that's probably, I probably broke it enough for solid tools to clean it up now. Nope, no, I didn't. It was close, though. It was. I got a little bit more something going on right <clears throat> Oops. This is where I, I do this process a lot. I get inside my models, and that is a spot where a 3D mouse is kind of invaluable. It's, it's pretty hard to navigate without it. All right. So, again, my interpretation of a barber chair. It's like a, mine's a little taller. Not, not a bad thing, but it's, well, I don't know, maybe it is a bad thing. There's probably, I think it's this portion right here. I think this section ended up being taller in proportion uh, compared to the other pieces. Which I could probably, you know, just because good enough's never good enough. I could probably use scale, squish this up ever. Nope, 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 nope. Not working. Don't do it. Leave it alone. I have too many, too many pieces in there. This, this is a ridiculous idea. Okay, so there we go. So that is my barber chair. Eh, it's not bad. It's, it's uh, it turned out kind of cool. It was a fun. That was a fun model, definitely. Uh, yeah, as I'm looking at it, there's definitely some proportions that are maybe a teeny bit out of whack, but overall, I would sit on it. <laughs> if, that's, if that's the test, if that's a litmus test, that's the test by which you decide if a chair is worth it, I would sit on it. Um, oh, I left the code up. Aaron Hookup's still there. So again, just to throw that out to you guys, if you're interested in 3D Basecamp and looking for an opportunity to buy a discounted ticket, Now's the time. There's only 20 of those coupons. So check that out. Give it a shot uh, sooner rather than later because they will run out eventually, I think. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Um, yeah, I, I thought you meant to leave the code up there, so I wasn't saying anything. I oh, wasn't hey, sure. Hey, it, wor it works, I guess. I don't know. Nobody, nobody complained about the letters being in front of the chair or anything. So uh, other thing is this guy right here. Um, I said, I saw, I saw the Kickstarter. And I reached out and said, hey, you know, fill me in, tell me about this. And I got to say, I really like it. I think, um, you know, the, one of the things I've always liked about SketchUp, and this is going back well before I ever worked at SketchUp, was uh, simplicity and customizability. The fact that you can learn a couple of shortcut keys and do just about anything you need, that was always really cool to me. Um, and then customizing your keyboard so you have everything you need within, you know, fingers reach. Um, and this kind of plugs into both of those. It is really very, it was very quick and simple to learn. I struggled because I think my struggles had more to do with me than anything the Sketchpad did wrong. Uh, like I said, there's a couple things on here that Steve talked about maybe modifying. Oh, the, the down arrow. It doesn't include a down arrow. Uh, putting the down arrow so you can do that, Nate, that uh, magenta inferencing. But uh, overall, this is pretty cool. I really enjoyed using it. That was really nice. Um, would it replace my Space Mouse Enterprise? Mm, you guys know how much I love my Enterprise. So I don't think I could trade it in, but I'm, I'm really intrigued by the concept of the Space Mouse Puck plus this, um, because that was always my complaint about just the puck is I have to take my hand all the way off there and over here to hit shortcut keys. If I had my puck right here and it was literally click here, click here, click here, I think I would go for that like when traveling. So I made this, this may become my new uh, travel setup is this plus the smaller puck. And on top of that, like I said, I told you guys at the beginning, one of the things I'm missing was the 10 keypad. So this brings my 10 keypad back too. So overall, my totally unbiased opinion is I really, I think I like it. 
I'm not sure. I say I think. <laughs> I believe I may like it. But I, I really think this, is, this has a lot of promise. This could be uh, a really cool option. So, uh, yeah, I, I would definitely uh, recommend, if you have any interest at all, uh, take a look at his Kickstarter. And like I said, I think the buy-in is for a single one, is, it's, it's incredibly cheap. Um, so this is a pretty cool option. I think uh, it's something that I, I would choose to back. So, yeah, so there we go. So we got a, uh, we got a barber chair, we got a new peripheral, and uh, all in all, it was a pretty good, pretty good day. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's a couple issues with the mapping. I would have to go into SketchUp and change my mapping from uh, Command-Z to uh, Control-Z. Not a big deal. It actually would only take me a few seconds in SketchUp to change that mapping to make this function. So, um, yeah, overall, pretty cool. I, I do like it. And it does have a working save button. Save, save, save. Whew. One button. That's that's some that's some hot hotness right there. Uh. All right. Yeah. Well, that's it. We're there. That that's it. So I may I may go back. I don't know. We'll see. I don't want I don't want to mess with this too much, but uh, I definitely have some pieces that are as I look at the reference model. I got my geometry in there pretty good, but like these pieces feel like they want to move up ever so slightly, which fortunately I have room to do that. This guy right here looks like maybe he's just a little bit too tall. I was thinking of a full height chair. I forgot your head, the headrest goes up above, but that's, that's pretty easy changes. I come in here and I can grab this and Move that vertically back up into here. Um, yeah, like I said, the big the big thing that's a little bit off is the location of this rest. But to do that, I'd have to actually chop some geometry, and uh, I'm just not feeling up to that right now. I'll put it on the warehouse though. This will be on the warehouse, and if you guys want to go back and correct my shortcomings in my model. I will, of course, not be the slightest bit offended, but honored if you would spend your time <laughs> picking up my shortcomings. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's, we're there, guys. It's a little after three, it's a little shorter than normal, but uh, I think that turned out okay. Um, yeah, something I would love to see, I, wanna th I am gonna put this up on there, and uh, it would be cool to see what you guys do with rendering. Like I, like I said, I, I think rendering's awesome. I'm all for it. I just haven't really had the time, energy to dive into rendering, but I'm loving seeing what other people do with my models when I, when I do share them. Um, to that end, I wasn't planning on, on doing this, but I did want to show this uh, because, man, because this, this I, I think Alejandro's still on here. Um, I think he had one of them. Uh, there's just some super, super cool renders that came out of the, the Lego Millennium Falcon model. I, I threw that up there. And uh, Jiminy Billy Bob did one of them. Here, here's one of the pictures. This thing straight up looks like a toy. I mean, it, it looks like a picture of an assembled toy, but it's not. It's actually the SketchUp model. So that's awesome. Uh, had a couple more. Sean did this one. Very cool, kind of a flat matte uh, finish on there. Here's Cotty. Carson was on here just earlier. He's a uh, there's a little bit of his work. He's got the the glowing engine in back. <laughs> so cool. And yeah, just some detailed shots. I like renders, but I like when other people do it because I'm just not uh, not patient or, or good enough at that. I don't, I don't know. But uh, yeah, there's a there's a paint over from Liam crazy man uh, but yeah so if you guys want to go ahead and grab this and throw some shiny leather and chrome on there and render it up that'd be awesome I will as soon as we're done here I will put this up on warehouse put the link into the forum into that uh, the the topic that we've been looking at this one right here oh now, now I'm not there anymore uh, 
keep going back. Here in our, our live barber shop. Uh, I'll throw that up there and you guys can check it out if you are interested in buying a ticket. Now's the time. Get 200 off. Use my coupon down below. Uh, but other than that, we are pretty much done. So I want to say thank you, Casey. Happy to be here. I'm going to go ahead and post the link to the Kickstarter for the keypad one last time. Awesome. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you to you guys, of course, for stopping by. Uh, I always point out if it wasn't for you, I'd be sitting alone in a room modeling, which doesn't sound bad, but <laughs> <laughs> doesn't sound as productive. I probably can't get uh, SketchUp behind me to say, you know, hey, how about half a day I just go model alone? I feel like <laughs> it better when I do this with you guys. So, um, And as always, leave us your ideas. Uh, we will stop the cameras in a few seconds, but we'll leave the stream going for a little while. So if you guys have ideas of things that you think would make cool three-dimensional models, something fun we could do in SketchUp, leave those in the comments. And we will be back here next week, next Friday. We'll be right here doing the same thing again. Um, and I don't remember what we're modeling, but it will be something fun. I should probably start looking into that. What's my next model before I start this? But a room to grow. I see I have opportunities to learn still. So that's it, guys. We're done for today. Thank you so much. And hopefully, we'll see you next week. <laughs>